All right, Dragonair Silent Guides, guys, come and join us down below. You can hit the link and download the game and join us, or you can go onto Steam and join us there, or your mobile device. Any mobile device you want, you can jump on the game with us. Come and join us. Come and join us in Discord that's down there as well, so you can play with all of us. And if you have any questions at all, we will be there to always answer them. Today, we're going to jump on the test server. I already streamed two hours this morning at Reset. We did all my daily stuff. I'm actually on my main account behind me. Just playing around here on the Vortex boss. But we're going to jump over to the test server. Even though the test server has not been updated. And we're going to make sure that the aura people are the same. So I'm going to have to verify on the main account. And the test server will put it We'll pull it up on my tablet. Then we'll look at the test server to make sure that they haven't changed. And then we'll test out all the aura things we can test out. Like how good the teams can be. What kind of damage they're going to do. What kind of damage they do versus Ice Blast. And there's a lot of Ice Blast teams right now. On day two, season three, there's a whole lot of Ice Blast teams. So they're extremely strong. They've been extremely strong in season two. Like everybody used them. I used them the whole entire season. I not only use them on the Vortex boss, I use them everywhere. And then now we're still using them because they're just that strong. They really are so good. But we'll look at all those different variations. Let me see what kind of damage I get here on this team. And we'll get some people in here and then we'll go on to the test server. But of course, here at day two, my guys are level 70. They've barely got gear on. They have level eight artifacts on because we can't we can't upgrade them past level eight with our adventure rank where it's at right now. So this is all we can do. Yo, Oreos, what's happening, my man? Any good shadow epics? Can't remember. There is the really good shadow epic that they nerfed. The one that looks like Varesh. And he is amazing with Witch's Remains or the crown on. Now, before we had 100% uptime on Witch's Remains or Crown. Like, every 10 seconds, he would cast that ability. Since they nerfed him and how much shadow he gets on his second ability. And I think they nerfed his ultimate, too. I can't be 100% sure on that. We can check, though. We can look at him on the live server and we can look at him on the uh, test server. Yeah, so we'll know for sure. I still think with enough skill haste, we could get him to almost 100% uptime. But we'd have to have skill haste on the runes. We'd have to have skill haste gear on him, which is fine because there's, I think there's a couple pieces of skill haste gear that also gives accuracy. So that'll work out well. And then he should have almost 100% uptime on decreased defense. So if you do have Witch's Remains, that'd be, that'd be really good to have. It's a lot of additional damage if we can keep that up the whole entire fight. Any other epics though? Like epics for, I mean, that epic would still work for any kind of dungeon that we do too to keep up Witch's Remains. And he does give shadow energy to other shadow heroes. So they can do their ultimate more often. Do I have Daphne? I don't have her. Yeah, yeah, she's great. I like Daphne. I think Daphne's great. She shares 35% of her attack whenever she possesses somebody, plus she gives them shadow energy. She still does her battle skill while she possesses someone. I think she's strong. Yeah, I like her. I played around with her on the test server. I did play around with all the shadow people on the test server. I did a video on them as well on my YouTube channel. But but like a week ago. Or even maybe a week and a half ago. And like I said, the last two days since they've given us this brand new season three, they've changed some things. And I need to check out... What's her name? What's the vampire looking one? The P, the P in her name? A-L-P... Uh, uh, Faultis or something like that? Her... I'm not sure if they changed her shadow generation that she does for the whole entire team either. We need to check. Like the amount of shadow she does that ultimate ability, I think, and she gives everybody shadow on the team. I'm not sure if they changed that as well. Yeah, we'll check that. We need to see how much, you know, how many, how much did they actually change? It's pretty wild. Everybody still, all the content creators, because it's the weekend have been asking, please update the test server. I want to get on the test server and test all this stuff out, but it's the weekend, so. I don't think we'll have an updated test server until like two days from now, maybe even three days from now. But I'm hoping the aura are all the same, so we can definitely test them tonight. Yeah. Not gonna happen? Well, it's not gonna happen today, right? Today's Saturday for them, Saturday for me. Not going to happen on Sunday either tomorrow. So in the, at the earliest Monday, but I don't know if it's going to happen on Monday. I hope so. I hope they can get that going. But updates, I, I would think updates take 
quite a few moving parts from different departments. Even though it's an update on the test server, I would still think, and that that's already live, I still think it takes a minute to get things in order to update it. You finally pulled an exclusive. What'd you get? Night God. Welcome back, guys. On my second to the last dice, you got Azul and Daphne. Congrats. It's the first it's the first one you've ever had. That's cool. I think he's a cool exclusive. Not only that he does well with damage, but I think he just looks extremely cool. I think the way that he transforms into that demon, it's pretty sweet. And I think he's pretty tanky, right? When he does the demon form. I know he does do a lot of damage. Like ex a lot of damage AoE even because that basic ability turns into the cross-section attack, right? With with crazy damage. From what I remember, we're about to find out. We're going to jump over the on the test server soon, right when I'm done with this run. But I remember him being something like that. And I can't remember what his defense goes up to or mitigation goes up to or if he has something special with it. Because his natural state or his untransformed state, he's ranged. So he stays out of the combat. But then he jumps up into it. Takes reduced damage, but not sure. Yeah, we'll look at him. I did play him, but I only played him for a day and did a video. And then since then, you know, I have to remember all these heroes and what they can do kind of hard you haven't seen him transform yet oh you just got him three minutes ago yeah right when you do his ultimate he'll transform it's pretty cool 20 percent damage reduction 50 percent attack speed increase yeah yeah you'll like it it looks sweet but oreos you don't have him right you got daphne and you got asphaltus yo meteor what's going on buddy you're using your meteor streaming name late stream again yeah yeah we got to get these streams in I've been really, well, I wasn't really slacking for streams. There's other reasons behind why I wasn't streaming in the beginning of the month so often. We didn't have a test server. There wasn't a lot going on. And I knew I'd be streaming more once we had all that out. So I kind of held back on my streams. And now I got to kind of catch up a little bit. So I've got to do some extra ones. But that's all right. That means I get to spend time in the morning with everybody that's up when I wake up. And then now before I go to bed, since it's 8 p.m., I get to spend time with you guys. Not as Faultus, but all the other shadow ones. Yeah, that's you, Night God. I think Oreo's got a Faultus and Daphne. And we're going to check to see what kind of changes they made. I want to know the exact changes they made to those heroes. As far as shadow regeneration goes, or maybe even the damage they do. So we're going to pull all that up in the test server right when we're done with this fight. I'm going to pull up the new server on my tablet, and we're going to compare the two to see what they changed. Oh, on the laptop, you're on that one, and then you're swifter on your on your phone. Okay, because you were swifter here yesterday, right? Meteor Storm. Yeah, guys, check out Swifter. He's got a YouTube channel that he's doing Dragon Air content on. Swifter, what's up? I've got your channel. Hold on. Let me go to my YouTube my subscribers over here. There we are. There he is. He's right there. Meteor Storm Meteor Storm Gaming. Five new promo codes 23 hours ago. What else you got? Five days ago, uh, all nine working codes. Then we got a thing on doing... Fame Meander Floor 180 against Ravitrix. Legendary Runes Farming Ancient Battlefield 8. Yeah, man. I mean, total, you got a lot of videos on here. For Dragonair. Quite a few. Actually, all your videos are Dragonair. So whatever it says, your total. 72 videos it says here. That's pretty good. You tested Corrosion on Vortex on the test server? Yeah, but he's still not changed on the test server, though. He's still the same on the test server. Do you have him on the live server? So that's the problem. We want to be able to test this stuff, but they haven't updated the test server at all. But the damage is insane either way. Like, it doesn't matter. Even though they nerfed him a bit, the damage is still insane. I dropped my phone. Uh-oh, my people are dying. We've got to 5 million. I think we got higher than 5 million on my, my regular run. All right, let's end this. That was about, that was right at 5 million. Just a teeny bit over. 
but my run earlier today that I saved, it was just my first run. This is my second run. I just switched a little bit of gear. Fifty-six percent. How much did this girl do? Twelve point seven. I think she did better with the slingshot on. I put the slingshot on her with like an accuracy chess piece, and that would have given her an insane attack. So my run was five million three hundred and fifty-two thousand, which puts me in line with right here, number twenty. But. There's still 12 hours for people to jump on and do the boss. Which it's weird because if you look at all these people, look. We've got unkillable teams. We've got the bride and groom along with Ogok. And then of course, Beldel and Shinna. Right? Ice Blast. we got Ice Blast again. People don't care, man. They're just doing Ice Blast teams. Let's go. Ice Blast teams. We have a wild team here with... What was that? Is that what this one? Okay, it's 7 million. Oh, there's a number. 7 million with an unkillable with Ogok and Zephy. And then, of course, they have Flora. So, exclusive, right? With Flora. Killing all that damage there. She's probably doing, like, all the damage. Flora again. Was that the same one that I just clicked? Seven. I feel like I'm, <laughs> I feel like I'm clicking on the same ones over and over. We've got a Dauntless team with Unkillable. I mean, all these Unkillable teams. Dauntless just still wreck it. Okay, here we go. This is weird. This is the first Corrosion team I've seen. With Rook. Doesn't have his exclusive artifact. Does Has him scrolled. That's good. But 6.4 million. Still good. Oh, Kryn. Krynodon. He came in here this morning. He he uh, he uh raided us. Yeah, nice. Unkillable again with Dauntless. Anybody with Nesjinka along with um, Avelius. And then whatever else you got. Go ahead. Get that damage in there. Beldel again. Exclusive. The Bride and Groom along with... Beldell. Okay, Beldell. So I'm right there kind of at them, right? With 5.3 mil, and I used the Aura team. Like, I think I'm the only one I see up there with the Aura team. Old school Garius along with Rose and Ardrith, and then I use the exclusive along with the uh, other one that's really good to play with her. So, Yo, morning, morning! Gordine's in the house! What's up, my man? Might not be good enough gear right now to run Corrosion. Yeah, I mean... These teams are going to change, right? We're definitely going to see an evolution of teams that are going to be much different than day two. Much different than day two. Everybody's pretty much level 70 if they pushed. If they used a lot of their stamina, they, they've got to level 70. We can only do the first Goblin Cave. We can't do Goblin Cave 2 yet. Fifth, fifth stage. Everybody's doing the fifth stage by now. And they'll have level 70. And then they'll have them geared. Uh, they'll have them scrolled. And then using gear like this. The little bit of epic gear we can get, the little bit of accuracy gear we can get. And then here's what I did on mine. Since I didn't have a lot of gear and a lot of gear options on this girl, I gave her an accuracy chess piece of 40. But that's 40 times 8 because we're using the slingshot. No, 40 times 6.5. So that's how much attack. That's way more attack than an, an attack chess piece would give us. Plus, I've got a two-piece set here for 40 more accuracy. So the slingshot is just pumping out some crazy attack for her. She doesn't need the accuracy for anything, but it's pumping out some insane attacks. So that was pretty cool. I'm running these, this new artifact on her, the exclusive. It's not her exclusive artifact, but it's good for the aura energy. And then we've got this two-piece set, this epic two-piece set we can buy. Regular gear on her. We've got our Witch's Remains with just normal kind of gear. And that was it. Flat defense, flat defense. We've got... And we lasted... We went up to like far more than Unkillable would go. Unkillable goes 150, right? Isn't it 150, I think? It tells us on the boss here. 
and we went up to 240, 270. I know we went, we went pretty high as far as rounds go. Pretty damn high. Where does it say where he cuts through? I can't remember if it was two. More, I can't remember if it was 150 rounds or 180. One fifty. Yeah, we went way higher than one fifty. But those unkillable only take two support. If it's Zephy and Ogok. So it's Zephy and Ogok, you just put three DPS and for 150 rounds, they stay alive and you just do max damage. So if I did have Zephy and Gogok Ogok with three DPS, I'm sure I could be up there too. Wouldn't be that hard, right? I just need a Zephy. I got an Ogok. Okay, let's go check out the test server and let's compare to see what's changed. And let's test out some more aura stuff. You're free today, tomorrow for work? So you're going to check what out? Oh, you're going to go to the test server and check it all out? At 150? Thanks, B, man. Appreciate it. The wings are one of the best looking artifacts. I don't know what they have to do with our aura heroes. They're just some nice fancy wings. That epic artifact is good. Yeah, the epic artifact is amazing. The slingshot is broken as hell, man. It's so good for any hero. It doesn't matter who it is. Even if they don't need accuracy, just putting it on them, getting the additional 3,000 attack is pretty insane. All right, so what we need to do is compare for Shadow. Like, you guys have had a lot of Shadow questions. I want to see what exactly changed for Shadow 2. So let me jump on the game here. And we know this guy here was changed. And he's really good. Taldi? So this guy was so good before. And he wasn't... I didn't, I didn't feel like he was broken good, you know? I think Rook is fixed already on the test server. Oh, I can tell you right now. We can just easily see if that damage... Portion is 10,000 or 30,000? No, he's not fixed. It's 10,000 here. On live server, it's like 30,000. And then who, who? what else do we know was fixed? We, until we can do a side-by-side -side comparison, which we can do right now, I don't know if there's been other changes as well. So I want to see if there are like sneaky little things. They Maybe they lowered the coefficient for their abilities too. I don't know. But right now, I'm logging in to see. We're going to find out. Okay. Let me find this guy really quick. Wait. Man, why is it always logging in? It's always logging me into the wrong account. Uh, Twitch heroes. Yeah. All right. All right, we know for sure that this second ability here that was really giving him a lot of generation, uh, shadow generation, this is not 20 anymore. I think this is 15. Instead of overall 60, it's now 15 per stack, which would be 45. Ten seconds. It's 15 now. Same. Okay, so they just lowered it by 5, but they lowered it by 15 total. So he's not getting back around every 10 seconds to be able to do decreased defense. But I still think we can with enough skill haste. And then on this one, yeah, this one said that it gave allies 10 shadow energy, but now on the live server, it only gives allies 5 shadow energy. 15 total with those 3 hits. So this has been changed. And then here he gives, when you gain shadow energy, 30% of that obtained energy is to another shadow ally that's still the same but they did they did kind of nerf him quite a bit i mean here going down five going to 15 and then this one going from 10 to 5 is it's pretty hard on this guy it's just an epic it's not like he was doing insane damage but he was really helping out all the other shadow people to do their abilities faster and then himself to put up decrease defense i just think it Later on at late game, or we can test it now because we're on the... No, we can't test it till they update the test server. <laughs> we 
once they update the test server, we can put a whole bunch of gear, some skill haste gear on him because this is affected by shadow energy, the ultimate. But this one is affected by skill haste. So we get this down to like eight seconds. I think we'll be okay. Get his attack speed up a little bit because every time they do damage with their basic ability, they also get shadow energy. So that might help out. And he'll be rocking it. I think he'll be fine. Though I don't really feel like that nerf was needed. Okay, let me check uh, Aspalta. I think her amount... 20 shadow energy to all shadow allies. Strikes the enemy three times. Okay, so it's not 60 shadow energy. She just does 20 to all allies. Let's see if that's still the same. Okay, that's still the same same uh, attack percentage. Same attack, same attack. Okay, they lowered this though. This says, as the battle starts, grants 100 stacks of Heart of Hate to all shadow allies. And you lose one Heart of Hate every second now this doesn't last long it's a good boost in the beginning of the fight sure especially in something like arena or i don't know whatever else you're doing i mean it's a cool new it's a cool nice boost right 100 stacks would be 50 percent additional damage correct at 0.5 percent and then every second you lose a stack so it's only there 100 seconds and then it's gone forever they lowered that to 80 stacks instead of 100. hmm don't know why that was needed either, but okay. I didn't hear anybody complaining about that in content creator chat or any viewers. I guess it wouldn't be viewers. They didn't have access to it yet. I didn't hear anybody say that that was, you know, too much. Okay, anybody else? Let's look at Azul and see if he was changed at all. Or Daphne too. Because I like Daphne. I think Daphne's pretty sweet. Okay, Daphne does. That looks the same. Okay, Daphne was not changed. It is in the gulf between understanding and mediocrity that we draw ever nearer to the perfect truth. See if I'm missing any questions here. If it's not passed, no point in doing testing on the server. It is for Aura. I don't think Aura was changed. So as long as Aura is not changed, we can do we can still do the testing I want to do with Aura heroes compared to something like and compare them to Ice Blast heroes and wild heroes so we'll be okay with those if it hasn't changed ultimate reducers and skill slow effects shadow in any way i don't think ultimate reducers affect them because they're not doing ultimate yeah yeah that doesn't affect those guys but recharge speed penalty is going to affect their battle skills somehow i don't know how it's going to affect this but i guess if you're recharge speeding them and making their bar go slow, it should affect this. 20% less, that would that would make it, you know, 12 seconds then, right? Instead of 10 seconds. But yeah, they get away with not having to worry about ultimate reduction, but they also don't get to take advantage of things like the hourglass where you get an increase in your skill haste. But the skill haste still does affect the battle skill, it just doesn't affect the ultimate. So while it's kind of cool that they're not affected by completely by recharge speed penalty on the ultimate but yes the battle skill they're also the reverse of that right then when you use the hourglass it's only affecting their battle skill but it's not affecting your ultimate yo grave what's up my man welcome back good to have you you're looking to use shadow as your main okay nice did you get azul or any of the other cool ones let's see if azul changed at all 50 shadow five stacks 10%, 5%. Okay, that looks the same. Twenty shadow energy, okay. All right, he did not change. I don't see any change on him at all except for Oh, he's not untargetable now. I don't know what the untargetable portion is. But now he's, now he can be targeted. Why did they change that? 
I mean, why did they give that to him in the first place? And then they launched the game and they're like, oh, untargetable is not good. I think that that's a cool thing to have. You're going to be hit by AOE, yes, but you can't be single target attacked, which is really a kind of a sweet ability, right? Maybe it was too hard to take him down. Maybe with the damage reduction attack speed and demon form doing all that damage, I don't think so because it's for... I mean, it does last. We can have it last longer with Daphne out there, possessing him and giving him some more shadow energy so he can stay in demon form longer. But they took away the untargetable on the live server. All right, all right. Okay, now let's go check out our girls. I mean, we could always do corrosion if you want to, but we do know that this is still not updated. Let me see if the, the damage modifiers, they changed any of the damage modifiers here. They changed this one from 350, no, from 50 here. You see where it says 50? They increased it on the live server to 65% once for every, oh, because they changed the 30,000. They changed it to, from 10,000 to 30,000. Okay, so they upped the attack percentage, but then they made it to where it only is affected every 30,000. Ignores the enemy shields, yeah. Here, the same thing. They made it 55% attack for every 30,000 corrosion. And ignores shields. So it's still broken. Believe me. If you got Rook, it's still crazy. So congrats. All right, let's check out the ones I've got. And I don't think these were changed at all. And if they were changed, I hope it was to buff them a little bit. That'd be really nice. Yeah, it's something new, right? So Azul's fine. I think Azul's great. And it is something pretty cool. And I think the Untargetable was probably pretty nice. Maybe in Arena it was too much. I don't know. Save dice for Season 2 or try some... I would use the Season 2 banner, wouldn't you? Save dice for Season 2 or try some banner. Oh, a, like a Season 1 banner before Season 2? I don't think there was anything... Like, the Season 1 banners aren't the special banners to where you can do six dice to get the Epic Selector, right? You have that at the end of Season 2, which, save your dice for that, always. You could pick up Varesh, you could pick up uh, Furbath, you know, you just spend six dice, you get a whole bunch of scrolls, you get to pick whatever Epic you want. That's insane. But I would say for the Season 2 banner, because Season 2 heroes are good. If you can pick up Bell Dell, if you can pick up um, the other Fire exclusive, really good heroes. I think the Season 2 heroes are kind of better than the Season 3 heroes, except for Rook and Azul. The exclusives are really cool, yes, but I think everything else is just kind of like, whatever. <laughs> 10 times speed for the, versus the boss in Faye this season? Yeah, you couldn't use that all the time. I thought that they increased the 10 times speed for everybody. It doesn't matter what season you're on. As long as you're playing the game, they've increased it for all seasons. 10 times speed in Faye, right? I didn't think that that was a season specific. And the Epic, uh, and besides the Epic, yeah, yeah, you'll be playing those. That'll be a great team. Okay, let's see if this girl's been changed at all. This is the Auror exclusive hero that I guess I was lucky or unlucky to pull. One or the other gains invincibility for five seconds. I didn't know she got that. Gains invincibility for five seconds if the hero's current HP is below 30% after taking damage. During, during which time her attacks are guaranteed to crit. I didn't even pay attention to that. And I've been playing her every day. Hmm. I mean, guaranteed to crit. My girl's already going to have 100% chance to crit or very close to it. So that... I, I think I remember reading over this. And I was saying that this should be critical damage. If you increased her critical damage by 100%, then we're talking. Making sure she always crits, we'll probably already have a 100% chance to crit on her. So, I don't feel like that does a lot. Alright, that's the same. Okay, the damage numbers are definitely the same. 20% shield strength. Six percent up to a maximum of 200. 
of the hero's attack. See, these we can test out. If these haven't changed, we can definitely test these. Okay, they've left out on this, and I know it's right. I know it's 500% of the attack, but they just left it out on the test server. But on the live server, it says 500% of her attack. And I know that that's, that's, it's working properly. Okay, she's good. I don't think they changed. I doubt they changed anybody else, right? Come to me. All right, that's all the same. I don't even really use this guy anymore. I was using him, but this dude, I don't know. Something about this guy I don't like yet. I think I need to get different kind of gear, get some more in-game gear, and then um, focus on some stuff with him. Because he's got huge multipliers, though. Not here. I thought he had a huge multiplier when it goes to his ultimate, right? 400% of attack grants 35 aura energy to allies with the highest attack. Blaze state. He summons this to follow. And anytime this launches a basic attack, it does 7% of target's max HP up to 350% of this guy's attack. So that should be a pretty big attack. When the ally following launches a basic attack, He'll consume, this guy will consume 15 of his aura energy to enable this thing to do a coordinated attack. See, I never even, like, I never noticed this. I never even noticed this happening in, in the Goblin Cave. You would think 7% max target HP up to 350% of his attack. I would notice something. Maybe we just don't have enough damage yet. Okay, but he's still the same. Okay, I think everybody's the same. I'm pretty sure all these are going to be the same. I've heard this girl's pretty nice. Delicacies? What do these have to do with research? Let me just double check her and that's all we need to check. She gets a 5% permanent permanent increase every time she reaches blaze state, is that right? Oh no, just whenever you consume or energy, that's even better. 50% additional attack, permanent. That's probably why she gets so good. No more than 50% of the heroes. That's weird. 50% of the heroes attack. She's going to get high attack, but we can't even really hit hard with that. Ignores 30% of the enemy's defense. Gains. Okay, that's fine. I think I think all the aura are normal. Okay. Yo, Meteor, thanks so much, man. Swifter, appreciate that love. They put you down to two times max versus the boss. Yeah, versus the boss and Faye, you're down to two times. That's right. But any other kind of battle that you do, any of the normal battles that you do during the stages, you can do 10 times speed. Her ultimate always crits, right? Which one? This girl? The exclusive? I don't know. Does it? I don't think it says anything about her ultimate always critting, does it? No, no, no. You still have to have... You still have to have crit rate. This one you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. You have to have crit. It doesn't say anything like that. <laughs> does she always i've never seen it not crit so you always see the big yellow numbers i think it because it's giving us an additional targets max hp but you're right i have never seen it not do yellow numbers but let's test this right now with something uh how do we test that i mean we can do it we can do an attack with out crit rate but then once we put all that crit rate on and have her crit I mean, I guess as long as we have the same critical damage and same attack, we can see. Right? Okay, she's already loaded in here. Let's see if she has any gear. Okay, so she's got no gear, so she definitely can't crit. Well, not crit easily. Let's go over here and take this off. She's got a 10% chance to crit right now. Yeah, but even if we see a, a yellow... 
even if we see a yellow number, like we're seeing yellow numbers all the time, I think it's just because that's just kind of what they are. Like she's critting right now, right? With no gear on? <laughs> I don't know. All crits? Uh, I think it's probably a visual bug. And I bet that if we put crit on her, we would see a much higher number. But the only way to do that, like there's nothing we can put on that's just crit. On the test over here. There's nothing that we could just do. Let's give her a higher percent chance to crit. But that'd be really buggy. Yeah, yeah. Everything was critting on her. All those hits right then were visually saying that they were critting. Yes. Yes. Everything. Is it that way on the live server? Man, all I got to do is stack her up with critical damage. You know that would be fixed. If she's just like at 100% always perpetual crit rate, that means that her passive is, is broken somehow. And it's always active. Right? When her HP drops below 30% during uh, which time the hero's attacks are guaranteed to crit. That would mean that this is broken and broken on live. And how did that slip through? If we give her... Where's that one crit artifact? This one. It's got attack. But see, it's got attack on it, though, and critical damage. Where's crit rate? How are we going to gauge this? Second time you got me live? Yeah, I'm doing late night streams now. Welcome. How are we going to gauge this? Even if I max this out and we give her a high crit rate with this attack, then we need to go back in there with this same kind of attack, no crit rate, and see if the, the crit rate number that we're seeing, see if it's the same, right? See if there's any variation. And, well, we'll be able to see if there's any variation. Let's just see if there's any variation in attack. That, that'll let us know for sure. I don't want to level this up. Is there something else we can bring in that will give us like uh, some kind of crit? Where's crit? That's easier to level up. See, this already takes 10,000 to level up. This gives us a 30% chance to crit. That would give her a 40%. We've got a 40% chance to crit right now. Let's just bring that up to like 50% and see if we have any variation in numbers at all. And then we'll know for sure. Okay, 51% chance to crit. All right. Okay, tell me what her basic attack is hitting for. 15, almost 1,600. 4,397. Okay, there was a difference in her basic attack right then up to 19. See, that basic attack hit for 15, 9, 3, 15, 9, 3. That's the same as before. What's that 19 one, one though? That's weird. It's always kind of around the same time, too. Damage dealt up. Why does she have a damage dealt up? Is that her... There's 1911. There's that one little hit for, but the rest are 15. We, I haven't seen any variation in numbers. It's like she's always critting, right? I mean, we see the variation in numbers there because she's using, she's in blaze state or she's not in blaze state. And then she's getting this damage increase up. Oh, if she has a shield on, she gets a damage increase up. That's why. She gives herself shields with that one ability. If she has a shield on, she's doing 20% additional damage from the artifact we put on her. So that's where we're seeing a different in damage. 20% right here, additional. Okay. But I don't see... That's the 19. 15, 9, 3. I don't see any variation, man. It's all the same. Yeah, blood sample, they are. They're all the same. We're at a 51% chance to crit. We would see eventually, if it was just a visual error, we would see different numbers pop up. We would see some lower numbers and some higher numbers. And it would all look like crits, right? If there was a visual error. But it's just critting. Hold on now. Now I'm logging into the main account really quick. Because that's just a little bit too crazy. 
that's uh that's a little way too crazy i think she's bugged in a good way yeah but that won't last and do you think that made it over into because now that you say that whenever i look at her numbers for her ultimate i always see it as a crit number i never see it as a non-crit i don't pay attention to her other attacks when i'm going through goblins right now i don't really pay attention when i just make sure that i finish the goblin right it's three star i'm not sitting there looking to see if i crit but now that you mention it i could swear that all her ultimates for the last two days have always been crits they've always been the big yellow number which would mean that right now i'm playing her a little wrong I've got critical damage gloves. They don't add a lot of critical damage, but obviously that's a big increase, so we need to put that on her. Are you admiring my trinkets? They're custom. Let's see. Uh, she's in your goblin team? Yeah, they're all in my goblin team. I've just been using them to do goblins. I've just been using them for everything. This is my... Uh, you know, my goblin team will be something like... Oh, I think I just, yeah, I just lowered some guys so I could go do the Vortex boss because we got six days. But then I'll put two other, I've got two other ones. I've got an epic one and another legendary one. The kelp guy, I'll throw him in there. But stage five is pretty simple. Hmm, maybe we shouldn't mention this. Maybe we shouldn't talk about this. I've heard nobody say anything about this in content creator chat. Not that I can remember. I haven't seen it. I've never even seen them seen them um, mention her name or even mention aura heroes at all, really. Yeah, which isn't that big of a deal now, but later on, it'll be a huge deal when I play her with just critical damage. Like critical damage substats here, critical damage subs, uh, critical damage glove, critical damage, you know, whatever we can find critical damage, additional attack, not, have, not having to worry about crit rate is a pretty big deal. A really big deal. Hey, new arrivals here. Hey. So if we don't have to worry about that, we've got attack on her right now, and that's got critical damage of seven. We've got critical damage of seven here. Attack is good. Attack percentage is fine. I mean, it's not like we're going to have high accuracy anyways. Right now, we got a high attack. So, I mean, she's uh, she's probably performing. Just, just for future, I need to pay attention to it. Right now, I don't think there's much I can do to really take advantage of it. 1228. I mean, there's, there's even the artifact here. There's not going to be any artifacts that's really... Is there a critical damage legendary one? We just have the horseshoe. And that's not going to be better than what she currently has on. It's 14% 14, 14 critical damage. <laughs> it's not going to be better than that legendary. With all the additional attack the legendary has given us, plus increased whenever we use our... I don't think this is going to, this is going to be different. 2248. What were we? Two, it's a little bit more, right? We were at 2228. Two, two, this is... 2242. Two, two. And she gets her attack speed up. But the other one gets damage when she's in blaze state. Or when she uses aura, right? So we got to get to blaze state. Okay, here she is. Oh no, she's not in blaze state yet. Takes a while when she's by herself. She's only at 45. All crits, but they nerf Shadow and Corrosion. I guess this just got past them. Nobody was worried about these aura heroes, which is sad because if she's not performing awesomely well with always critting, you know, the, the thing is we always test these people with 100% chance to crit, and that's how we build them. So we just didn't even notice it. Everybody was just putting 100% chance to crit gear on her, and we weren't even paying attention. 11,000. She's in play state right now, so she's hitting for 11,000, I think it was. Sparkling 
11,758. Let's see if we can squeeze out just a little more damage with a much lower artifact. Hey, I bet that's the that's the issue. Nobody's tried to do it. Nobody on the test server. Like anytime we played her on the test server, yeah, we had either crit rate gloves, a whole bunch of crit rate substats, or critical damage gloves with a whole bunch of crit rate substats, crit rate substats on the runes, and then we never even thought of playing her without it. Why would we? So we didn't even know. So nobody reported it until now because we're seeing her do it and we know she's got no crit because it's day two. Okay, we got to wait for her to get to blaze state. Three ultimates by herself to get the blaze state takes a minute. And then it's not like she's always in blaze state. Then she uses moves. It takes some of the aura away. So these guys, these guys are okay. I just feel like they need to get to blaze state quicker. Or stay in it longer. Either one, one or the other. Okay, she's in it right now. What do we have for 11,782? Uh, 11, somewhere around there. It's not going to be much more if it's more. I think it was a little bit more. Well, that was much less. So it is less because the artifact is giving us additional damage when we use aura ability. I forgot about that too. Her basic attack is like 18 more damage, but this is far less. Okay, we'll stick with the artifact I have on her. The legendary one, that conversion, is working really well. This where we're getting 1.4% of the aura energy consumed up to 30%. I don't, I don't honestly understand what this means. I mean, I understand that when we consume aura energy, which we don't consume a lot, the damage of the skill is additionally increased by 1.4% up to 30%. I, I get that. But when I consume here, I consume 20. So is it for every one? So for, am I getting 20 times 1.4% additional damage? Consume 20 or energy to strike the enemy. I guess because it doesn't say per. See, it just says of the aura energy consumed. It doesn't say per point of aura energy consumed. You see where I'm confused with that? When the wearer consumes aura energy, the damage of this skill is additionally increased by 1.4% of the aura energy consumed, up to 30%. Okay. I mean, if I read into it, I would I would assume it's for every point of aura. So if it's 20, then that'd be 20 times 1.4 or 20 times 2 later on. So yeah, that's a lot of additional damage every time we do an ability. And she's going to consume aura energy when she does her battle skill. How much does he consume? Oh, she only consumes five here, so it's not that not that big here. <laughs> the ultimate is nice though. Of the total energy consumed? Yeah, total energy consumed. So the total energy can no, it has to be bigger. It has to be per point, because it adds a lot of damage. That's why I was consumed. Yeah. 1.4% of total energy consumed would, would not be a lot, right? Are you talking about 1.4 times 20, which is the same thing? That's what you're saying, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, she only consumes 5. So that's only going to be 5 times 1.4, which is not a massive increase in damage. So it really only affects her ultimate really well. Hmm. I guess... It's really sweet for her ultimate to get 40% additional damage when she does her ultimate. But couldn't we... Could, so only the ultimate looks fancy. The rest of it's really... You know, it's, it's not affecting her when she's doing her basic attacks. It's not affecting her a lot when she's doing her battle skill. So isn't there something else we could use that has attack, attack percentage in the legendary category that gives us maybe 20% damage all the time or 25 or 30% damage all the time? that would then be better than this 40% additional damage only on her ultimate. Oh, only up to 30%. Yeah. Yeah. Only you're right. 
Energy consumed up to 30%. I don't know if I really think this is that great now. We'll have to do testing once we can... Well, what am I, what am I talking about? We'll have to do testing. Hold on. We can go... We can go to the test server now. I just wanted to see if that if that if we crit 100% of the time and we do. So, yeah, that needs to be fixed. But I'm not convinced on that artifact now, you know? I feel like that there's something out there that would be better. The higher damage you do, the better it is. Well, any any artifact that increases damage, the higher damage you do, the better it is. The, the fact is that it's only affecting the ultimate. A little bit on the battle skill, but nothing on our normal attacks. So if we have something that will affect everything, even at a lower percentage, lower than 30%, even at 25%, but it affects everything, over a five-minute fight, that's going to be more damage, I would assume. 5% less damage on that ultimate, but way more percentage damage on all your attacks plus your battle skill. I would think that that would be better on on something like the Vortex fight, right? Okay, this is the test server, correct? Yeah. But I don't know what other artifact I would use. Let's go see. If you desire someone to talk to, like, what do we got here? Attack, attack percentage. We've got the playing cards, which is just going to give us that, what, that trigger the... And I don't have these. I actually never played Arena enough to get these. This is pretty good. Every melee hero on your team. But we'd have to have four melee heroes to make this worthwhile, right? Otherwise, we only get 18% if we have three. Now, if we have four melee on our team for the Vortex boss, I think this is going to be better. Ranged heroes, no. That's an exclusive. That's not for Radiant. This is for our um, derivative damage only. Ice crystal, burn... Oh, that's the one we have. At the beginning of the battle, increase the allies damage dealt by 15% only at the beginning. Crit rate increase. When not at full HP, the wearer deals an additional 15% damage, but we do get a crit rate increase on this too. But she's already 100% critting all the time until she's fixed. Until she's fixed. The one she's fixed, this would be actually be kind of cool. 15 crit rate. And then 15% damage all the time because she's not going to be at 100% health that often on the Vortex boss. I don't know. We're having those big shields from Garia, so there, there might be... She might not get that 15% damage all the time. 15% less direct damage and converts 8% of that. Is this into healing? I guess there really aren't any kind of <laughs> good artifacts, huh? What about... Crit rate ones. That's Jinka. That's Rally. This one's pretty good because she's melee. We get crit rate attack plus critical damage. And we take a little bit less damage. Those are not what she can use. This is shadow energy. Hmm. I don't know. We're kind of limited. If there was something in here that was just a little bit better, we'd be okay. Well, she's got a 100% chance to, to crit no matter what. So that's actually kind of good to test her out. The number is going to be exactly the same. No matter what, the number will always be the same when we run her on the test dummy here. So if I put her in... Where's her exclusive at? Oh, man. We got to do summons so I can level this up. Are you it's 
pretty annoying they don't give us enough resources to level up artifacts. All right, everybody close your eyes. Let me know what's going on. Talk to me, talk to me. I'm just going to summon some heroes. We got a legendary right here, though. Let me know what's been going on. Do you guys try out anything new for the new season? Are you still playing the older seasons, trying to get through that, trying to get Ardrith? Did we just summon 10 and we got two legendaries? Man, my luck was not this good on the banner. I am kind of happy. Oh, man, we got Azul. Jeez, I wish this would have been on my banner. I don't know. I can't say that because I did, I did fairly well. I got an exclusive. I cannot complain. It's aura, but um, hey, whatever, you know. Damn, two legendaries in a one pool? <laughs> Hopefully aura will be decent for something, and if not, oh well. I'm still playing it. It's new, so I'm playing it. I don't care. I got my one aura team I'm leveling up no matter what, and then I got my second team I'm leveling up that has all the cool Sigrids and Varesh. Uh, Theodomir. He's new to put in there. If you get the bride and groom, I'll cry. I got the bride. I just need the... Uh, I got the groom. I just need the bride. I got Theodomir, which I have him on my team. That's pretty cool. We got Daphne. I am opening 200, which is the same amount that I already opened. And we're getting far more legendaries. I don't know. This is the test server. They might have increased the drop rate of legendaries just to make it look smooth. Who knows with the test server? I guess not. We're hitting kind of a dry spell now. But it would be wise to do that, wouldn't it? If you're a game developer and you unleash a test server to a whole bunch of content creators and they're making videos on the test server and then they start summoning and see all these legendaries pop up, it's definitely misleading. But... There you go. If you did increase the drop rate, it would look cool. Maybe get people excited to do it themselves, thinking they're going to be that lucky. Wouldn't be nice. Wouldn't be right. Definitely misleading, but they could have done it. We've done, we've gotten two legendaries and two different five pulls, which never happens for me. Never. And we've definitely pulled way more legendaries than I did out of my 200. But, you know, we're just doing good RNG right now. I agree it may be higher. Yeah, I think it is higher. I agree. I think it is. I think it's higher to show, to get people excited and to false, give them false feeling that they're going to get some good legendaries. I think so. I don't know. We hit a dry spell right there again. I think we hit pity this time. Yeah, well, positive we hit pity. <laughs> but we got Rook. <laughs> Azul. Man, if this was my main account, we got Azul. We got Rook. We got Daphne. We have uh, the other one. Espalta. We pulled quite a few other other legendaries as well. I saw Victor, I think, in there. Man, if this would have been my 200, I would have been like, what? Azul and Rook would have been some really cool pulls. And we got the Bride. We didn't get Theo yet, though. So I would have been kind of sad. Yeah, we got her again. Okay. Pretty good pulls. Yes, I'm admiring your trinkets there, lady. Okay, she's maxed out. Now we're going to switch this over to... The only other artifact that I can think of that can do some... Some damage. Do you guys know of another melee artifact that's actually really good? Insane damage. The only one I can think of is the one that if we have other melee on our team. Where is it? This one, right? You 
desire someone to talk to. Okay. Sure, we'll do it against five test dummies. We don't even need to do five minutes. We'll do it for 180. Because we could run this 100 times for 180 seconds, and it's going to be the same exact damage because she's always critting. Sparkle and shine. Let's see what she gets. Then we'll put the other one on. But the other one, I'm going to throw in a couple melee heroes to increase the damage. Not melee heroes. Are, we're not going to we're not going to mess with the three team bonus. We'll make sure it's just different affinities. But we will bring in some other heroes to give her a little bonus on that melee. Just to see. It's cool animation. I do agree. It's cool animations, but the thing is their graphics are so good. When they go to those cutscenes, it's not actually crisp. Have you ever noticed that? And this is for all their cutscenes. The graphics are amazingly crisp. Even in the open world, when you look at heroes, they're very detailed and easy to see what's going on. But when they cut to their ultimates, it's very dark, grainy. It's not high resolution. I always have it turned off. Right now it's random. I think it's just doing it every once in a while. All of us who are free to pay are able to get some more legendaries easily. You think they should, should increase it for the live server you're saying? Can you read her passive one more time? Yeah, yeah. Isn't it the one where she drops below 30% HP, she gets invincibility, and then all her attacks crit? That one? I guess it is kind of detailed. It's just, I feel like it's not, I feel like it's not really clear though, the ultimate. The visually, they still look a little blurry. All right, how much time left? 28 seconds. 4.6 million. Let's cut that ultimate off. So we don't have to see it anymore. It's taking up our time. All right, 5.5 5 million. This is clean. Never. Okay, you want to see your ultimate? Or you wanted to read her passive ability again? Passive ability. The hero's attacks guarantee crit hit. Wait, why does it read weird here? This passive is saying that she guarantees critical hits. Were we, were we reading something different before? It says right here, interplay state... And then it just says blank straight out as a sentence, the hero's attacks guarantee critical hit, period. So this is this one's actually staying that she always crit hits no matter what. But here, I thought it was within I thought it was inside this gar jargon down below. Gains invincibility for five seconds of the hero. Current HP drops below 30% after taking damage, during which time the hero's attacks are guaranteed to critical hit. Yeah, we were reading it properly down here at the bottom, but this this is uh, wrong. What's it called? It's um, I forget the word for it. When you have the same information over like this, this effect can only trigger once. Yeah, well, well, here's the thing though. It says gains invincibility for five seconds if the hero drops below thirty percent after taking damage comma during which time the hero's attacks are guaranteed critical hits but that doesn't matter it's redundant that's what i'm thinking of it's redundant because it always it says up here at this line the hero's attacks guarantee critical hits period like this would be separated it would say this wouldn't be all together it would say inner blaze state blaze state down here and then you would have a space that would be like a little paragraph if you wanted to count it as that and then it would say like bullet points and then it would say the hero's attacks guarantee critical hit another bullet point. And then the third bullet point would be this jargon down here about gain invincibility. 
Oh, we already know she critical hits on all her attacks, no matter what. She does. Live server and test server. With no crit rate. With no gear on. She crits everything. So this one sentence is correct. The hero guarantees critical hits. But then why add down at the bottom? Now this is the test server. I'm assuming it's the same on the live server because she's always crit hitting on the live server too. Okay, so this is nice. I feel like now that with her... It's going to be really fun to gear her on the live server. Once we start getting some really good gear, critical damage, everything, I'm looking for just max three hits in the critical substats. Don't have to worry about crit rate. I'm looking for additional attack wherever I can find attack as well. And we just load her up to do damage. Sounds fun. And, it, and it's not a bug. We thought it was a bug earlier. The last 30 minutes we've been like, this is a bug, man. She's just critting all the time. Okay, how much damage was it? 5.5, right? 5.5 million we got with this artifact. Okay, so same attack, same flat attack, same same uh, attack percentage. Now we're just boosting her damage up to 24% is what I'm going to do. So say we went on to the clan, the clan boss, the vortex boss. <laughs> say we went to the vortex boss. And we had melee heroes. We don't want to use fire. We can use one fire. So we can bring this guy in. Who's another melee? He's melee. He's melee. You've chosen victory. You've chosen victory. No three team bonus still. Not frost. I don't need frost. Okay, here. He's melee. No, he's not melee. He doesn't turn melee until later on. I'm sure I'm passing like a hundred. Where's like Shragul or something? This guy, Garrett's melee. Okay. Where is she going to go now? She should run up to the same point she was at. Okay. All four of these are melee. She should get the attack she needs. We're not going to... Defense increase won't matter. So that's fine. We'll keep that. She's not getting a three team bonus. And we'll be able to see the increase of damage. Let me turn off their ultimates. Uh, it doesn't show her damage increase. That's weird. Okay, let's see if she gets over 5.5 million. Just because she's getting 24% increased damage all the time. All basic attacks, battle skill, and her ultimate. Whereas, like we saw with the Aura one, she's only getting that 30% additional damage on her ultimate. And, like, a low additional damage on battle skill, but no additional damage on basic attacks. Which, we won't see a big variation because we're, we're fighting a lot, of, a lot of targets. If it was one target, we'd probably see a much larger spread. More damage, probably, for this piece on a single target. But since it's a lot of AoE in here, I don't think we're going to see much damage difference. And we might be lower. If she truly is capped at 30%. During Blaze and not 30% crit rate during Blaze and 100% crit rate when below 30%. Uh, are you sure it's not meant to save? Well, she's critting all the time. 100% chance to crit. Outside of Blaze state, inside of Blaze state, zero gear naked. She's always critting. We tested that with some minimal gear to give her 50% chance to crit to see if there was a variation in the, the numbers we were seeing. Even though the number was visually showing it was crit hitting, we were seeing if there was any variation in the number as in there was a visual bug, but we weren't. It was always the same number all the time, which means she's critting. No matter what. No matter what you have on her, she's going to crit. And then we went over to the live server to make sure she's still doing that, and she is. She's still always critting. So that's pretty wild. And she does have that one sentence that says she always crits, but why have that redundancy? It's like they added it as an afterthought. They had this ability that when she drops below 30% HP, she gains invincibility, and then she crits all the time. Look, same damage, 5.5 million. More, actually, because we were at 5.5 clean. Here, we're at 
500,000 or, or, or five point five million five hundred and fifty thousand. I think before we were at 550, 550,000, right? Five million five hundred thousand. Five million five hundred and fifty thousand. Is that what I'm trying to say? And again, this damage will be the same. We run this again, it's the same exact damage. Now, if we do this against a single target boss like the Vortex boss. But that would mean I'd have to go in with Garius, Ardrith, and I couldn't use Rose then. It'd have to be Garius, Ardrith, and Sagamir. Which isn't as cool as having Rose in there. With removing a debuff, giving us heals. Sagamir gives us the heal over time, but that's still nowhere near as cool as the heals that uh, Rose does. But it can still work. It can still definitely work. If the additional damage is worth it. That's if it's really, really worth it. Yeah, did you, uh... Sir, did you have any rain? Sir Rain? Did you have any other ideas? Or did I answer that question correctly? Are you sure it's meant to be 30% critical damage and 100% crit rate during blaze state? Oh, you're talking about the 30% is critical damage? And not... I don't see any critical damage at all in that statement when we look at her passive. I don't see any critical damage. You're saying, yeah, you say CD there, critical damage. Sort of like a frenzy state. I'm with you on that. I think it, I think what it was originally was she gets down below 30%. She gets invincible, and then she does get a frenzy state to where she crits on all of her attacks. And that sounds pretty cool. But then I think somebody came in and said, why don't we just make her crit all the time? And they put that line above it, and then they didn't remove the, the frenzy state. Critical damage addition would be great. If we're misreading that, and it's, she always crits no matter what, but then when she gets down below 30%, she has additional critical damage, that would actually be really cool. But I don't think it says anything about critical damage. We'll go look back at it. Let me write down this number, though. Let's see if we actually get a big difference in number. 1.6 million? Where's the overall damage? Once it ends, we can't see the overall damage. Okay. It was 1.6 million, correct? I thought there was somewhere where it showed the total damage done. What the? Oh, no. We're looking at her. We're looking at only her. What, what's wrong with me, man? What's wrong with me? 1626161. Okay. Oh, 1,626,161. Now we're going to try this with her. Hey. It's not really her artifact. It's anybody that's doing or artifact. And let's look back over that passive again. <laughs> let's see what this passive says again. We're like... Looking at this passive hard, man. Mid, uh, critical damage. Okay, that could make sense then, right? If there was that typo. The, hero, the hero's attacks guarantee crit hits. Okay, we know that. She's doing that. It's meant to be done. It's not a bug. Here, when she drops below 30%, during which time the hero's attacks are guaranteed critical hits. Are guarant <laughs> But they even spelled it all out, right? If it was to be 30%, uh, they would have to put another 30%, if that was the case. They'd have to put another 30% and say critical damage. So, no, it, it's... I'm scared to say anything to them because I don't want to change the way she functions. I think she functions, functions awesomely. And I don't want them to go in there and be like, oh, well, she's guaranteed critical hit. We messed up with guaranteed critical hit down here when she goes down below 30%. I don't know. I, I think if it said she's guaranteed to critical hit, and then when she goes below 30% HP, she gains 60% additional critical damage, something like that would be really awesome. Yeah, I'm with you. But no, it doesn't read that way at all. 
It's just a redundancy of the crit hit again for no reason. So they must have originally had her like this. And then they said, oh, we'll just give her crit hit all the time. And then they forgot to take this out or something. I don't know. It's weird, right? It is uh, very weird. Okay, now she's got the wing artifact on. Let's see what the difference is. Somebody in uh, QA, quality assurance or whatever they call it, <laughs> missed that. If you change the 30% to critical damage, yeah, but you can't change the 30% because the 30% is her max HP. It's talking about 30 when she drops below 30% HP, so you can't. That's a that's different, right? Because that that line below is saying when she drops below. So the 30% really doesn't associate with anything except her HP. So they would need to add another number in there and then say critical damage instead of crit rate. But I don't trust them to mess her up. It's not like she's overpowered. She's not overpowered at all compared to Rook or to Azul that we've seen yet. But I really don't want them to mess her up. And the funny thing is, I've always been testing her on the test server. Well, on my main account currently. With trying to get her with crit rate. Or I would have. I would have kept trying to put crit rate on her. I wouldn't have remembered that she always crit hits. Even though I can see it visually all the time now. I don't know. We'll load her up with a whole bunch of critical damage and we'll see what she can do. We'll definitely do that. But I'm sure the other content creators did the same thing. How did... Uh, Gorax has a video out where he tested a whole bunch of these aura guys. But I don't... You can't see... Like, you can see the gear they have on them, but you can't see... Like, he doesn't show the stats on these people. So I don't know how much critical damage he had on her. And attack. Rook was one, yeah, Rook is the broken one. Like, Rook is without a doubt the broken one. I think Azul is just very strong. In general, like, the damage numbers that he can do, looks they look huge. Like, every basic attack does 750% damage in a cross-section attack seems pretty pretty crazy. And then you have Daphne possess him, and then you have the other guy do 100% Taldi. Is that his name? Okay, so it's not much different. We had 1.6 million, 1, 1. Uh, 1, 626,000. She's at 1.5. Is it different over a long, long Vortex fight? Not really. Not with these numbers are this close. And we have to have four other melee in there to make it the same. To make it better. What if we just have Ardrith and Garius? Wait, wait, wait. We don't have the right artifact on it. I have both these artifacts. So on my main account, once we get to farming, like once we're a month in and we get to farming good gear, I'll try both of these, but... It's only going to be 18%. Which healer is the best? What do you mean best? The best healer is this tank up here called Garius. He's the one on the top left. He's when you pick him, he says, you have chosen victory. <laughs> he does this heal like this right there. Boom. And then if you have the staff on him, he does amazing shields. Now, there are a lot of better legendary healers, but it just depends on what you have. There are some really good healers or really good things to keep you surviving, like uh, Philosia. She's amazing and Frost. You've got uh, Gillian, which is an amazing healer. You have um, Mithrasi, which is a crazy good survival legendary to revive everybody, to make sure you can't die, to give you heal over time along with healing. It just depends on what you got. What are you, uh, what are you looking for? But honestly, the best tank healer combination is that guy right there because he heals the whole entire board based off of defense. If you don't have any kind of legendary, like insane legendaries that are doing something, you know? And he's an epic, so if you ever get an epic selector box or you get lucky enough, hopefully you have him. 
Then you've got Furbath, which is another epic, which is really good because he does decrease defense, decrease attack on the boss or enemies. And he also heals everybody around him. The funny thing is the best healers are kind of the ones that aren't really just true healers as far as epics go. And then the best healers for legendaries just depends on what you got, what teams you're playing. Yeah, I wish they would too, Blood Sample. They really need to, right? What do we do for 30 days, man? We just... It, what do we do for 30 days? We're just sitting here, sitting on our thumbs, waiting for 30 days to happen. The game doesn't... I mean, there's no game until 30 days, right? There's not. You fight some dungeon stuff and you get ready for stage 9. And then you're just sitting there waiting for 30 days to hit. And then you're like, okay, I've saved up all my bread. I've waited. I've farmed goblins a million times. Let's do it. And then the chief challenges pop up then too. You should you should be focusing on chief challenges then, not focusing so much on gear. You're always going to farm gear, especially the way they have gear this season, which is awesome. So we know we're always going to be farming gear. Same damage. That's pretty interesting. So on a single target with her... We can go with two other melee. We can use this gear piece on her, and it will be the exact same damage because of the way... If you desire someone to talk the way that this works. Only on single target. On AoE, she's going to do more damage with two melee with her compared to this one. But the difference is, if you don't have a lot of options to buy legendary artifacts, I would obviously get this one up here because it's versatile. For a lot of different heroes instead of just one that only works with aura people. So now I kind of wish I could have my... Basically what it means is I wish I could have my legendary <laughs> glow back. Because I don't really need this. I don't. And it's not like I'm going to put this artifact on somebody else and then the wings on some aura person with it. I just don't need this. We'll do more testing later on, but that pretty much, I mean, that's enough testing. I don't think we need to do any more. She's got a 100% chance to crit. The numbers are always going to be the same. We use this one that gave us with three other melee and then with two other melee. So we were at 18% additional damage on all of her attacks. And then we were at 24% additional damage on all of her attacks. And then we use this multiple times. AoE, single target. Not really, uh, I don't think it's worth it. Unless you're some big mega whale and you just got tons of duplicate legendary to play around with. And I'm not like that. Any idea on quality of life? Did they add a communication system? They did add some emotes. I don't know what that's about. They've always had a chat channel, but I've never used it. Yeah, they've always had a chat over here in the bottom, but I don't use it. You can chat to your alliance. You can chat to global chat. You can chat to some other kind of maybe more localized chat for your area. But blood sample, I'm with you. 15 days would be ideal. And it makes sense, right? 15 days to level up your account, then you get the double drop rate, you have fun there. Then you're kind of still farming, you're ready for the uh, chief challenges, you're ready to start making teams, you got the gear, you don't have to do it all at the same time. Yeah, I don't know why these guys, uh, do they play their game, you know? <laughs> do you? Friends list caps at 150? You don't do anything with friends though. Not really, right? Day 10, we'll be able to clear almost everything. It depends on when we can make the rank fives, right? Whatever day we can make rank fives, yeah, we'll be able to clear whatever we want to clear. You just rolled Gillian? Hey, nice. So should I spend upgrades for Gillian? Yeah, you might as well, man. She's great. Increased defense, removes debuffs, right? Does all the healing? I believe. I'm trying to think off of memory here because there are so many heroes. But... Heals all allies, 15% of the target's max HP. Make sure you put Enlightenment chest piece, Enlightenment rune on the bottom left so you can get this Enlightenment up. Dispels one debuff, increased defense, which is great. Damage reduction. The cleric also gives them recovery over time. Yeah, she's strong, man. She's good. 
That doesn't mean you shouldn't play Garius if you have him. Because you're asking about healers right now. So if you have him, play him with her. And you've got your tank. You've got two healers. You could bring those two healers into the Vortex boss. You don't need a tank in the Vortex boss, but you need healing. This guy's amazing for healing. She's amazing. She'll remove a debuff, which you need later on in the Vortex. She'll give you increased defense to keep your team alive. Those two together will be fantastic. Because this guy's really no joke. You're going to use him everywhere. All the dungeons, the bosses, all the stuff. Yeah. Just made the increased drop rate from the start. I don't know about from the start because there are some, you know, unkillable teams or something like that that might upset it. But 15 days is fine. I think the increased drop rate after 15 days is good. That way, if there is anybody that has some kind of cheese or five inspired heroes and they can somehow do stage seven eight or nine on day you know whenever the harpy opens which will be tomorrow day three so say you went in there with your fifth inspired everything day three you're farming stage seven eight or nine and you're getting crazy drops because it's double drop rate i think waiting till day 15 is smart i mean we have a lot to do till day 15 the thing is that day 30 you've got a lot to do because the chief challenges pop up so let us already be farming ready for the chief challenges we're still going to farm even when the chief challenges come because we need a lot of gear but doing it all on the same day is it's kind of uh, it's kind of annoying. It's great. It's a fun day. It's like yeah, we get cheap challenges. Now we get to go after that legendary and we get to farm gear. But that means I've got thirty days of of not fun days. You know, just waiting. Okay, so we did some good gear testing with her. I think that's great that I know now how this lady's gonna function. I don't know if that helps any of you out there because you guys might not have her right. So what are we gonna do about the other or heroes? Heroes. Heroes. How are we going to test them out? We need to make some gear and we need to see what's going on with what's the vortex challenge. Boss takes 40% more critical damage. I kind of wish there was a blanket, a blank vortex boss for the test server without any kind of increase. So we could just test all the teams and it wouldn't affect anything. But this is kind of, this is kind of a blanket one, right? You just get additional critical damage. It's not like we're running a team in there with a whole bunch of, um, I'm not running, I'm not trying to compare my team to Shaltar with derivative damage where this wouldn't take effect. I'm trying to compare an aura team to Ice Blast and to Wild. So this is actually a good boss for that. Now we need to make sets. It takes a while to make sets, man. This is what I don't like doing on the test server because I want to do it on my main account, you know, as I'm playing the game. But here we're, we're going to have to get some sets going. Well, maybe we've got some sets. Can I not shield the queen What's the over, overall crit rate here is 85%. That's not bad because we got an artifact here just giving us critical damage because she gets her, she gives herself crit rate. So let's go to Well, it's not really 85% because that goes off the runes, but I'm just going to put 85% for now because I know generally it's somewhere around 85. This is Usha gear. Let's delete that. I don't know what gear set that is, but I'll keep it. It looks like a full gear. This we're probably not going to use. Let's delete. Okay, what does... Erich, he's just going with a DPS set. I think he's at 100% chance to crit. Okay, this is good. What kind of glove does he have on? Critical damage too with all that? Nice. It's close to 100. This is a support with the defense increase, right? Puppeteer. And additional healing. I'm where I am today because of my defense, defense. We've got accuracy on this. Quite a bit of accuracy. Since he's got a defense, defense here. So this is going to be our... Can we put plus? I don't think we can. Plus defense with accuracy. Invalid format.
Puppet accuracy. I'm where I am today because strength alone cannot eliminate. Okay, this is skill haste with defense. Skill haste. Skill haste. And then Garius, which will be ancestral. Death awaits anyone and healing. My back. Care for a piece. And says defense healing. <laughs> okay. I don't know what it means. Is Aura worth without uh, without the exclusive? I don't think it is. I don't think I don't think Aura even with the exclusive is worth it. To be honest, I'm just using it because that's what I have. It's new, so I'm just using it. You know, instead of me playing through season three with the same old heroes that I've used all throughout season two, which will work exceptionally well. If you look at right now at all the Vortex boss teams, you're gonna see a whole bunch of Beldells, a whole bunch of this Jinkas with Avelius for Dauntless. Floras for Wilds. You know, it's always about that exclusive. You put that exclusive in there and it, and it kills the damage. Now, without the exclusives, who knows? All I can tell you is this team right now, we can test it out, right? We can test this Wild team out currently and see what kind of damage they do. Then we can go in there and test out other teams and see how they do. These go together. This is a whole team. Obviously, it's a five-man team, right? And as far as times go, I don't think, I think these times are kind of botched, but we don't want to do 20 seconds, right? We want to do 21 right here. Yes, we want that for our decreased attack. Then we have our DPS follow up after that. That's fine. What are we trying to do for times on Garius and Ardrith? And I don't think Garius has as much skill haste as he needs. He's only got plus 60. Because we'd have to have... Well, we don't have any skill haste at all on those bottom ones, do we? <laughs> Where's our skill haste at? Skill haste. Skill haste 18. That's pretty nice. I think I was looking. I was trying to give him the highest HP. Here we go. Please. Please hit at least two hits into skill haste. There we go. Beautiful. Well, that solved all those issues. Now he's at 95. Okay. He's at 95. How boring. How boring. Save. So did they add the movable fields in the exploration battles? What are the exploration battles? What are those? It sounds so familiar. What is that? You run Felicity, Eric's Total Land, and my wild team? I'd run Azura and... F well, right now, we should actually be running... I think we're, we'd be running Adolphus right here, which would be better. The areas with the open and the clear? The areas with the, the arches to where they have the advantages and we have them, where we roll the dice to get a better advantage against those little areas. But what are the movable? Fields in the exploration battles. I don't know. Can you guys elaborate on that? Didn't know what else to call them. Yeah, those guys. But what is a move movable field in those? Did they add a movable field? There's no field in those. You just go in there and fight the bosses and open that last chest. And then they only unlock as your adventure rank goes up. To move a little field that heals people in it. Oh, those things. Yeah, every once in a while you'll get a battle to where there'll be some kind of spring in it that will give you some kind of benefit, right? Every once in a while. That's just a fight. Just some fights every once in a while have those. On the battlefield? Yeah, that's just a some fight. Random fights. I don't know which one. Sometimes you'll have a fight where you'll just have a little spring you get next to and it gives you some additional healing or increases your recharge speed or something like that. Did, did they remove those, though? No, they're still in the game. We don't see them as often because we don't really have any... We used to see those kind of more in the... 
the duels we did, but we don't really see them that often now. Not really, though. You're digging deep for anything new? You just want to battle to where you do something special on the field? Sometimes you'll get jumped. Like when you're in those archway battles, you'll get jumped by the enemy. When you go up to him, you'll do a roll. And then when you get jumped, you'll be, you know, they'll be all around you. So that's a little different battle. And then sometimes there will be a spring in there. But I enjoy those battles. I enjoy those battles because we have to have a buff. The enemy has to have a buff. Sometimes that buff that the enemy has is pretty strong. Later on, when we keep going, this is only day two, but later on when we fight those, they'll have three advantages. We'll only have one when we first go in, and then we'll have to look for that pillar to get an additional one. So it can be kind of hard when we're leveling up. I feel like it's not hard now because my roster is so, so robust, right? And has really strong heroes. But I do like those, and I hope they make those hard because they, they stopped doing those on season two. when it was i don't know they just stopped doing it they didn't have ones that went up to higher levels like 160 240 they didn't have higher levels of those so once we i feel like it was kind of challenging but kind of easy and then they just were done there weren't any more so i'm hoping for this season season three since we don't have a lot else going on once we kind of can go to whichever ones we want there'll be some really hard ones because there's nothing forcing you to complete those it's not like if you don't complete those you're not missing out on an artifact like Fey or Pillars, so why not make some of those extremely hard and fun to play? It's always nice to have content that gives you rewarding things to do it, but I don't care. I don't even care if it's just a little gold, a couple purple dice, and some worm arrow. Make some of those extremely hard so that even at end game, we're trying to beat them, just like we would with Fey and Pillar. I think that would be a nice, nice thing for a little more content just a little bit more you know you need to do them to get your journey level up yeah but later on once your journey level is so so high the whole board is open you can do whatever you want and then then on from getting much higher journey level you're just getting some like additional bread every once in a while but yeah that'd be cool that's fine i'm all for it man 10 times i think four times would be good i think four times on the vortex boss and four times on goblins would be good because i really don't like the the look of 10 times visually looking at 10 times is not fun believe me i love it in fey i absolutely love it but i don't like looking at it it's quite annoying Now, I didn't put any special times for Garius or Ardrith. I just let them free cast. Everybody else is timed up, but those two are just doing whatever they want. So I have a feeling we're only going to get about... 35 million? Oh, no, no. It just depends on what the, the, the boss is. We're getting a lot of additional critical damage, so this might be really good for Total Nan. And Erich, too. He's got a 100% chance to crit. We'll see. We'll see what we get on this one, and then we'll see what we get on the Aura guys. So what are we going to do on my Aura team? Oh, the Aura team's the same grouping. So we just we just throw in our Aura, aura DPS. That's it. Okay. But we need to look for a whole bunch of critical damage gear for our exclusive. And then when we try the other ones, we'll put on the same exact gear. When we try this, the normal horror guys without the exclusive. Or Erich for secondary wild DPS. You could use any of those. I'm not a big fan of Rash. He's cool. He can do some big numbers. Like big hit numbers. I'm just not like a huge fan of him. Honestly. Oh, you know what we're supposed to be doing? No, we have, we have him. We could have. Couldn't we put the crown on? She takes too long to try to apply a hit when she does her ultimate though. Ardrith. Like when she does this ultimate, she can apply Witch's Remains and she can apply the crown, but it takes some hits. But we could stagger her so we could have decreased defense up. 
both of them up. But we definitely need four times speed on the Vortex boss or something so that when we're testing out all this stuff, we can make it go faster. Yeah, Total Man is Total Nan is just too amazing. Any hero that gets 100% additional critical damage, 20% crit rate flat. I mean, it's going to be good. Doesn't matter who it is. Our guys are getting hit pretty hard. I think I had some people die at stacks, like 130 stacks, which is not actually good. So maybe that's why we need to change the timings. Okay, we could change them to... I don't know. Let me find some good times. Let me see if we need to increase their times. That way we don't waste a lot of time um, rerunning this because my guys are already getting pretty low at 60 stacks. Do you guys know of any updated good times for Rose with Ardrith and Garius or Sagamir? It doesn't matter. Rose or Sagamir, either one. I need to look at some old videos. Twenty-one twenty, fifteen one twenty. Yo, Joker, what's going on? So is this season three? Yeah, it's season three already. Well, sorry, I missed your comment. We've been in season three now for two days. So I've been streaming every day. This morning when I got on at reset, I did two hours and we went through and did everything we needed to do for season for that day. Actually, not not everything. Throughout the day, I was doing some more stuff to complete it out. So there was quite a bit to do. And then now I'm just jumping on the test server, testing some stuff out. But yeah, we... Uh, we're having some fun on Season 3. Yesterday, we did a whole bunch of summons because we just started Season 3. So we did all the summons on the banner. And then now I'm trying to play with some of the new heroes and have some fun with that. It's been pretty cool. Only because it's new. Because <laughs> it's a new new season, right? The new beginning part of the season. I don't know if I have enough. To do a 13.33, I don't know if I have enough skill haste. I thought we needed to be at 100 or 102, somewhere around there, right? I don't know if you guys remember. But we do have the hourglass we can use. Yeah, we do. I think without that skill haste, we can't get to 13.33. Okay, so we already lost him at 40 million. We lost our, our side guys. Forty mil, but let's check his. He's at ninety-five. 
But I've got two hits in the here and two hits. I'd have to get three hits. Or I'd have to change his gear. I really don't want to change his gear. Gotcha games? I would rather go back to more standard games. When was I playing more standard games? Do I ever get tired of gotcha games? No, I don't. What are standard games? Fighting games? Man, back in the day, I used to play Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, um, Samurai Showdown. I used to go into arcades. Capcom vs. Marvel 2. What was the one with the beasts in it? Um, there's a really cool one that had this beast along with um, Torak. Like a... What is it called? Man, fighting games, I used to play fighting games nonstop. But now fighting games are all online, so... It's a little different, but controller, you know, sticking controller, man. So much fun. I'd put my quarter up at Mortal Kombat 2. I'd be beating people for days. Like nobody could stop me. I actually used to get trophies at tournaments, which probably isn't something you should brag about. <laughs> oh man, back in my day, back in my day. Yeah, I used to go into this place called Mountasia in Jacksonville, Florida. And I'd win uh, Mortal Kombat Street Fighter tournaments. And then I, I traveled around to like Ta Tallahassee, Florida and Orlando. And we go around to all these places and, and play in tournaments and play against people back in the day. And it's actually quite good. And it was a lot of fun for me. Like I loved doing that. But since then, the only other game that I play religiously would be Call of Duty. And I normally only play Domination. I've never... I, I've always been like an old school Call of Duty, not playing uh, Warzone. Warzone just doesn't do it for me. It's too, it's not that it's slow paced. Warzone is actually very fast paced, but it's not one of those things to where you can get in a gunfight and then come back right away, right? You got the goulash, you got, uh, you know, your, your team's done, you're done. I like it to when I'm in domination, you got a goal there, you're fighting against people, you can gun down like five people and come out of it blinking red. Or you could charge in and do something stupid and die, but you're going to spawn right away and get right back into the fight. And you've got a goal. So I love domination. Like I can play 12 hours of domination a day. But that's why I try to limit myself and not really play Call of Duty unless I have time on my hands. Because if I start playing it, I uh, I have problems. <laughs> and I don't, I don't get anything else done, you know? So I got to cut, cut back on when I play Call of Duty. But every week right now when Call of Duty has a new... They have these weekly challenges that have an augmentation to a weapon. So anytime they have a new new one of those weekly challenges, I go in there, I do all the you know, the things it tells me to do with different weapons, and then we get this brand new attachment, and I try that new attachment out, and then I kind of get off of it. Otherwise, I'll be uh I'll be locked into the black hole of Call of Duty and I'll never come back. And you guys won't see me forever. And I won't give any videos uploaded or anything else done. It's not good, man. It's not good for my life. <laughs> but yeah, other games that I've played, I've played uh, Diablo Immortal. I played Diablo 3 co-op couch kind of stuff. I never really got into Diablo 3 hard as far as is like really grinding diablo 3 it was just a fun thing to where we picked a hero we played throughout the story and that was it for diablo 3 played the older diablos of course played world of warcraft quite a bit back in the day played um dark age of camelot before world of warcraft which i loved way more i thought dark age of camelot was the best mmo i've ever played when elder scrolls came out that was a great time a lot of issues with elder scrolls when it first came out as far as server issues and zoning into quests issues a lot but that was still a great game of, of its time Terra was awesome. Awesome MMO back in the day. I love Terra, actually. Terra was really good. They've evolved that quite a bit. There was a game right before Terra that I really enjoyed that was very beautiful, and it wasn't tab targeting. You had to move your hero around. You had to do with, like, a huge shield. You had another person with a pole arm. That was a cool MMO. So back in the day, you know, MMOs were great. And when New World came out, I was really had high hopes for it. And I also spent $300, which I'm not proud of. Um, Rift, Rift. Actually, I think, did I say, what was the other game I said? I think the other game was the game I was just explaining, and Rift was the one that I played a lot of, and it evolved into a lot, of, evolved quite a bit over the years, Rift. Rift was a lot of fun, man. And you had open world PvP, because I was on a PvP server, so whenever we had a big boss fight or a big Rift, there was this crazy amount of PvP. I always try to play on a PvP server. 
I like looking and checking my back, seeing what's going on. You die, you just respawn, man. I never care about dying. Um, I spent $300 to pre-order Ashes of Creation about five years ago. Since then, it has taught me to never pre-order anything. And I haven't. Because there's no reason to ever pre-order now. You can always get all this stuff the day before, the day of, or the week of. There is really no reason to pre-order. And I've learned my lesson. This was really like five years ago, right? Ashes of Creation. I thought it was going to be amazing MMO, and it just was like nothing. Well, AFK 2 is coming out. AFK 2 is another gotcha game, which I did play for three hours, and I did not enjoy it. AFK Journey is what you're talking about. I had a sponsorship with AFK Journey. They said they'd pay me a lot of money to do one video. They gave me all this stuff. I was going to sign the contract. I played the game for three hours, and I told them I'm not interested in even doing a video for money. I could have I could have already had a video ready for you guys to go for AFK Journey and been paid for it, but I told them, no thanks. I do not like your game. It's boring, man. It's so boring. You'll see. You'll play it for a day and you'll be like, ah, there's not really anything to this. I will tell you a brand new game that just came out that is very similar to AFK Journey that I think is actually a really cool game that's not going to get the recognition that it deserves, but it is crazy fun. Oh, it's in beta right now. That's why. It's an open beta. So not a lot of you guys can play it unless you're on Android and you can find it in the store. And it's got the most generic game that's stupid. It's called Dungeon with the and sign Kingdom. There's already a game out there called Dungeons and Kingdom. There's a game out there called Dungeon Kingdom. There's a game out there called any variation of Dungeons and Kingdoms you can think about. But I am telling you, if you can find this game and it's in open beta, like early launch, and it's called Dungeon and Kingdom. But you have to do the and sign. And I really hope they change the name before global launch. This, if this was AFK Journey, way better. Way better. Yeah, I'm not sure what people are expecting with AFK Journey, honestly. Because what I played was not fun. And I played three hours. And I just said, nope, no thanks. You need more stamina right now? What are you on? Messing up. About? In general, you need more stamina for the season. You need more stamina to level up more heroes. You should be ready by then. You should have been in goblins forever. Let's see if we get more than the 42. Is that what we got? 42 million just a minute ago. Well, whatever we get with this, we can just keep this. It, it, we're not really we're not really trying to see what we can get as far as max damage. We're just trying to keep our environment here the same for my or heroes. So we're using the same three. Like if we use Sagamir, Ardrith, and Garius with the same exact times that we have right now, we put in two or DPS. That's really all I want to do to see the damage difference between Wild and Or. And these are two very accessible wild heroes. And then I do want to make an Ice Blast team. And we can even throw the Ice Blast team in here, honestly. Even though it doesn't match, people are doing it already on the live server. You need more teams for it? Yeah, you got to make a lot of teams if you're really trying to compete. Once you get to other world, you got to make at least 13 teams, do 22 million each. Or up to 15 if you want to. To really do well. But I don't see a need for that. I don't do that myself. That's too much work for for a return that I just don't think it's worth it. Me placing 50th or 200th or 300th in the season just doesn't matter to me. You know, I play 17th percent, right? This season. And I did my 20 scrolls. And I got two new legendaries from season three so I got the same thing that anybody else would get <laughs> the same is the only uh, developer strategy games what is what is DNK is the only developer strategy games what do you mean Joker 
Can you ask what was wrong with uh, AFK Arena, AFK Journey? It was just boring. You ran around the open map like you would anything, but it's not open, really. You have a very led way that you have to go, AFK Journey. So you start out, you go around, you fight little things that you bump into, just like any other game you would. You go into like a little dungeon environment, you fight that, you get a little bit of gear. It, it was very like base, even compared to this other game that I'm talking about that's in beta right now. It doesn't look as good as the AFK Journey visually wise, but doesn't look bad. It it just seemed it just seemed very generic. AFK Journey did, and that's from three hours of play. If I'm playing a game for three hours and it's not exciting, that's that's like a for me that's a massive bad sign. I play a lot of gotcha games, a lot of app games, and for the first week I'm always into it. It's like, okay, I'm learning everything. I'm learning all the heroes. I'm learning all the, the bosses. I'm learning about the gear and your environment. So you're always busy. Even if it's not that great of a game, you're at least for a week, right? You can at least be excited. I normally am, always. But when I played that for three hours, there was zero excitement for anything. I was very surprised myself, believe me. <laughs> I was really surprised. Do I have Felicity? Yeah, yeah, we're on the test server. We got Felicity. We got Felicity for days, but I'm just trying to see what Aura Heroes can do against uh, these two right here. But you're right. We, we could put in Felicity along with Total Nan, right? See, they're dying at one tent. They're dying around the same thing. Actually, I think we did better the last run at 42 million. Yo, Grave, what's up, my man? Good vibes, always. Hope everybody's doing well. Unfortunately, I can't play music at night here because I've got to upload this video to YouTube. I'm under contract to upload these videos to YouTube, so I can't rock out some music on you for you guys. Actually, there is a way to do it. I just don't know how to do it. There's a way to do music that we can all listen to, and then when I download my VOD, that, that music does not go to the actual video that's saved to Twitch. And one time, um, our boy Final Kampachi over there that's streaming Raid Shadow Legends right now was going to show me how to do it. And I think it's actually kind of easy. So maybe I should look into that. Because I'd like some cool tunes going on while we're playing. That way I can still upload it onto YouTube. Man, that would be great. Okay. I'll look into it. It's just something to do with channels over here in OBS Streamlabs as far as how the audio goes. But I'll look into that so we can get some tunes while we're playing. Yeah, Final Kapachi's on right now. Special TT Gold 4. He's doing something over there in Raid. Actually, he's looking at a motorcycle right now. What's not worth buying with gold? Any know, anyone know where you buy the Epic Gear besides the, the Epic Gear? There's two places to buy Epic Gear. One is a vendor outside of... I'll show you. I can't explain it. It's Southern Adenthia. The name of the town starts with an E. Elun something. And then right north of that, there's a vendor. One of those crow vendors, something crow traders, that's running around. Up and down there. He has two pieces. And the other, yeah, that's the name of the town. Yeah, I got, appreciate that, man. And then the other one, you probably already have, right? Who is the other one? The other one was the... The person right outside of that one city in the Dark Elf area, right? The little gnome with the pigtails? Yeah. Terminus. Terminus in the, the Dark Elf area, right? Right outside of Terminus to the right of it? To the east of it? Just enjoying the stream, man? Yeah, I do want some music, though. I like having some... Like, right now, I'm hearing the, the sound of the these guys fighting behind me. That's unfortunate that we lost Erich so early because right now Total Nan's hanging in. So I feel like if we didn't lose Erich, we well, okay. <laughs> 42 million. I think that's where we, we we did 42 million before, right? Let's double check. Not 40 million. So we were at 40. So we did a little bit better. Okay. Let's put this at 42 million. Maybe 43. Let's go a little bit high. So 43 million with these two. Now let's change these two for some aura heroes, heroes and see how they do. I want to take a screenshot of 
all these timings, right? Now that we kind of have a reference, it's not like this team is doing crazy damage and doing pretty good damage, but at least we'll have a reference to see how it compares to this. Until I can get an Ice Blast team, I think the Ice Blast team is going to do way better than both of them, but for sure it will. Timing. Okay, I saved that. Now, let's take out Erich and Total Nan, and we're going to place them with... We'll go with the high ones first, and then we'll go... Oh, we'll take out this exclusive after that, and we'll put in some lower level ones. Aura. Right. We'll go with the two I'm using currently. Okay, she's got that artifact. We'll keep this artifact on her because it's stronger. For sure. Oh, we don't even have her leveled up. Has anybody tried any of these? Like, do you, do you have any... Anybody have any experience with aura that they've seen on stream and know that other aura heroes do well? I saw Gorax use this person, and he said that she was really good. She gets 50% additional attack permanently, and then he said that she was hitting really hard. Like, extremely hard, almost comparable to this person's single target. So that's pretty wild. So we'll test, we'll test her out. She's an epic. So if we can use her in place, that would be really good. In place of an exclusive, that would be that would be extremely good. Make sure everybody's got scrolls. Okay, they all have scrolls. Okay, so gear for her gear for her is gonna be different though, because she can guarantee crit hit. That's right. For this, we're gonna use the same gear that we had on Erich. 100 percent chance to crit. Crit rate of 11. Well, it's not a 100% chance to crit with her. What was Eric using? Uh, oh, he's using the slingshot. Okay, so we'd want... Did we have accuracy on him? We'd actually want accuracy here with crit rate. Let's double check his gear though when we get done here. Eight. 13, that's what I'm talking about. Replace that one. And then this it has a little bit of accuracy. Okay, that's good. He's rocking 94% chance to crit with critical damage gloves. And the slingshot. All right, that's fine. So with her, though, we need to switch up the gear. We need to look for everything that has to do with critical damage and not even worry about crit rate. Critical damage. Now, is there any different gear set that will work with that? For every... No, this set is crazy with her, then. For every critical damage, we get four crit rate. Right. Critical damage 25, huh? I'm sure we could do better. Critical damage with attack percentage. Hey, good call, good call. That's right. Attack percentage. And then if we don't have that, critical damage with flat attack. You are right. Let's do a few of these so we can get some more options. Yeah, if we have an attack percentage of like four hits into that or three hits, we'll go with that instead of critical damage. If, if we get um, lucky with that. All right, let's see if we got any good ones. Hey, new arrivals here. Care to take a look? Attributes, critical damage. What's our best one? No, not that. Not that. Still the one she has on critical damage. Two hits into critical damage. That's it. That's all I can get. Okay, that's probably pretty realistic, though. When we're playing our main accounts, two hits into critical damage is probably what we normally get. Man. 
Unless we're extremely lucky and we get those three hits. Or crazy lucky and get four hits. All we can hope for. Okay, everything's leveled up. Let's go back to critical damage and then look to see what we have for attack. Attribute, critical damage. Attack of 35. Attack of 31. This critical damage drops down too much now. Okay, so she's got the best piece on. Critical damage at 25 here with nothing else. We'll take that. Obviously, we're going to use a critical damage glove. But we're going to use the one that gives us additional damage when we have the same one that we had on Total Nan. Gives us additional damage when we do... Where is it? This one. Critical damage here. And then do we have any with attack? One? Oh, it's the one total nan had on. Okay, attack. Yeah, 18. Nice. Okay. Now we definitely want critical damage with the gear set we're using, right? skill haste we don't really need that to be honest man we didn't hit <laughs> we hit much attack and then now if we can go with attack and critical damage that'd be great and it's got attack percentage this is a nice piece nice okay she's set 273 critical damage plus we get four percent for four percent attack for every critical damage We've got quite a few melee here for her to get additional from that, which is better than that uh, wings ones we should add on. This should actually be critical damage as well, right? If we had it. Listen, the forest is to give her a little more damage. Although I don't think she's going to do a lot of damage. Okay, everything else is the same. Let's save this as aura. For now, and then we need to do those times. What DPS? We want her to go first, so we're going to do 21.5 with her, and then 22. Ardrith at 20. I think that's right, right? Twenty-one for decreased defense. She's gonna hit for twenty percent additional damage. Then she'll hit with her ultimate. Twenty, twenty, twenty. Okay. Let's do it. For the wild, we got forty-three million, right? Somewhere around forty-three million. Better epic ones and rank them into legendary. What do you mean? Do you have things to rank up gear? Mm hmm What's going on? Oh, only witches remains. Yeah, I'm not using I'm not using uh crown as well on anybody. But it's the same way we did the other test with, so. We could put the crown on. We could put the crown on the fairy in the back, or we could actually put the crown on Ardrith, but Ardrith takes a while to she could take a while to put up the crown's effect. And we've got her on a weird rotation, so I don't know when Ardrith would actually help us out if she had the crown on. And right now, she's got the highest max HP, too, which 
Before we had it on Garius. I don't know how she switched to the highest max HP. But I guess that's how it was last run. We didn't change any gear on those guys, so we'll leave it the way it is. Try to get epic gear with the stats you need to try to rank them to legendary. Oh, oh, you're talking about... Oh, I don't think we have any of those materials. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I can't remember what the, how they word that. To where you go in there and you have that. What's it called? It's not crafting gear. It's called something else. But yeah, I don't have any of that. I probably don't have any of that material. We probably won't see much of that material throughout the season either, right? Are there new rares coming for Season 1 and 2? New rares as far as artifacts or new rare heroes? Did we get... We got a... Did we get any rare heroes for Season 2? I can't remember if we got any new rare heroes for Season 2. I don't think we did. We got a few new rare heroes for Season 3, which we can try out. Did we for Season 2? What did we get? What new rare did we get? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a couple burn. We got a couple burn rare heroes. We got one Nord, which is the Ice Blast rare hero, which is really good. We got the Electrocute rare, which is garbage. And I guess that was it. Yeah, the Ice Blast. Nord is good. He's a rare melee one. They can give other people more Ice Blast. Or Ice Crystals. And then we got some burn ones, right. How do you farm mythic gear? Just by farming re regular dungeons. Stage 9. Stage 9 of a regular dungeon is how you get the mythic gear. And it's just RNG. It's a it's a glove or a chest, right? So you're still going to get the normal glove or chest for the normal for the other gear sets that are out there. I think it's going to be pretty RNG. I think we're going to have to do a lot of farming. Which is cool. I don't mind having to do more farming. But if we're going to do more dungeon farming, then we need more experience from goblins. Because we live in goblin all the time to level up heroes. Now, if I'm, if I'm going to be living in the dungeon, trying to get gear from there, and then spending all my stamina in heretical runes and ancient battlefield, because those gems, those left side, right side runes, are elemental specific. So if it's always dropping frost and fire for me, and I need lightning, I'm going to be in there for a while, right? Trying to get the, the main stat and the substats we want. We're always in there for a long time over there because gear usually we get some decent gear and we can put it on a whole bunch of different heroes but those runes we really have to farm a lot of now i've got to farm a whole bunch of regular dungeons to get that mythic gear i'm feeling like this season i need some more stamina and i definitely need some more, more experience from goblin not more runs i don't want to do more goblin runs just more experience from goblins is how i feel <laughs> because i do want to farm i want to farm for the mythic gear and I don't mind farming for the mythic gear. It's for it's fun for me to load up like 10 runs, 20 runs, come back, see what the gear is like, sell a whole bunch of it, then level up the few good ones, and then see if there's any mythic in there. I think that's pretty cool. That's exciting, but running, you know, goblins a whole bunch of times and then not having any stamina to even do that, that's gonna be pretty bad. They did promise more stamina. Okay, we'll have to see. Right, we're only on day two, so we're gonna have to look at the events. All those events to where they go tell us to run dungeons. Tomorrow we're actually going to have our very first event that will probably tell us to run Venom if Grave of Venom opens up. But we really can't gauge it off of the first event. You know how it is? Like their events kind of ramp up. By the 15th day and the 30th day you'll have the same event to go run the Goblin or run something else. But we'll get way more bread and higher tier of the bread. Instead of 60 it'll be 120. But yeah we need to keep an eye on that to see if that's true. Yeah, right? Goblins are very boring. At least in dungeons, we have a chance to get something that will excite us. On my main server, God, I got 5.3 million. With this exact team that you're seeing right now. No, I had Rose instead of Sagamir. So almost this exact same team. Same setup, right? I had Rose versus Sagamir so that we could get decreased attack. She has Witch's Remains on. She's healing. She's removing debuffs. From, oh, we don't, we don't get any debuffs on the level one. The aura is good? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. I'm not convinced. I'm just using them because they're new. Like, I, I wasn't trying to go find, like, the best team that could do the most damage that I had access to. I was just like, I'm playing aura. I'm leveling up aura. I'm just going to use aura. Even if aura only did 3 million for me, I would have saved it. I'm not that competitive. I like to do enjoyable things like playing new heroes and 
and finding ways to use lower rarity heroes like rares to go through dungeons but i don't care about getting the most damage i don't care about what place i end in the end of the season either i'm still getting scrolls i'm still getting gold dice i'm still getting free legendary heroes or not really free an early pity at 10 for the scrolls so i don't ever worry about that stuff yeah i'm not like a big minimize maximize to compete with somebody else if it was minimize maximize to get more rewards then yeah i'm all about it more rewards like i guess every day from the boss and me saying that is weird because you do get more rewards at the end of the season but it's just too much work it's too much work when it comes to other world and we got to make 13 to 15 teams to fight all those chief challenges it's a lot of fun and, and, and decent work for us to do the second month because then we do three bosses week one four bosses week two five bosses and then six bosses that's no big deal because we're going for that cool legendary reward that's fun but then me fighting against people after that for that last bit nah, that's just kind of like whatever i could make the team sure but time versus money i guess it comes down to do i care to do that when i could be doing something else you start mechatork on tuesday yeah you better be ready man you need like 10 hours to make your teams that first day to test stuff out well not really now i guess since there's a lot of testing that's been done on mechatork but if it was your first time and there wasn't a lot going on, you need to take the day off of work so you can make your six teams and test everything out for Mechatork. I'm telling you, man. And that's another thing about the in-game boss. I really like the in-game boss. I love how it works. I like how we get to use a lot of AOE there because we don't get to use a lot of AOE here on the, the Vortex boss. But I don't like how we're thrown into having to do it all in one day. And I've said this in content creator chat many times. I feel like we should fight Mechatork once a day for at least a week just to get some additional points and we get some additional things like we do here for the vortex but then during that week you can fight with different teams you can try different things out so that then when you have to fight them six times a day for like eight days you'll be prepared for it you won't have to do it all in one day and i'm telling you it's going to take you some time it doesn't even matter if you have 15 teams right now for the chief challenges it's still going to take you time to make your new teams like you can delete all those 15 teams now you don't need them anymore so that'll be closed down you won't have to worry about the chief challenges the domains that's gone you're just gonna be fighting mecha torque and it's gonna take time and then you're gonna be critiquing those teams every day for the next eight days and then the season ends that sounds like a second job <laughs> it's not like a second job to me you know <laughs> doesn't it I don't have witches. Oh, you don't have witches. It does hurt, right? If you're on see if you're at the end of season two and you don't have witches remains, this is why we need a way over multiple seasons to get witches remains. Definitely. For free to play, low spenders are people with bad luck. And it's really not bad luck when you think about it. They just had good luck and they're always pulling legendaries that aren't dupes. Or it could be bad luck and they're never pulling legendaries. But you get it guaranteed at 35, so they're pulling legendaries sometime. But yes, I absolutely agree that there should be something in the game that we do that gives us some kind of currency that over seasons we can save up and say on season three, mid-season three, you can get Witch's Remains or pick an artifact. Because that means that you played for seven months. <laughs> I mean... If you play a game for seven months and you can't get something as simple as Witch's Remains, there's a flaw there. So I'm hoping you get it soon because everybody deserves to get Witch's Remains. I feel like Witch's Remains should be something like an artifact that's in the arena shop. Instead of that one card that's in the arena shop, it should be something that like, like Witch's Remains. That is so... It's such a core artifact to have for everyone. Right? You got Erich and then you got him again as a dupe. There you go. Hallelujah. <laughs> Get that Witch's Remains. That's what James did. James TV did the same thing. On season one. Like right away too. It was so nice. He he got Erich and he had... He either already had Erich or got Erich afterwards and was able to get Witches immediately. Yeah, and that's true too, right? If we had Erich every season, not only could you make a Legendary stronger, which if you had a five inspired Erich, big deal. It's not like it's going to break the game or 
at any time, you can always uninspire people that you inspired. So say you got Erich, you got him again, you inspired him just to try it out. And then everybody told you, hey, man, go get Witch's Remains. You can you can get that back. You can uninspire that Erich and get that back and go get Witch's Remains. And they'd be like, oh, all right. That makes sense. Let's do it. And then over how many seasons? I mean, how, how long is it's five seasons, right? That's 15 months. 15 months of playing a game, you can do a fully inspired Erich. That's like, that's like the game saying, thank you for playing our game and we appreciate you. Right? It's not broken either because having a five inspired Erich isn't breaking the game by any means. Okay, so we did, we, we are doing more damage here. That's nice. We went from 30, what was it? 34 million or 40, 43 million on that wild team. But let's see what happens when we take out an exclusive. Although testing testing this team sometimes, I mean, sometimes you just get unfortunate and your people die earlier. Your DPS dies. Maybe at 130 stacks or 180 stacks. But we did really well here. 56 mil. S save? Oh, okay, save. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, so if we take out the exclusive and we put in this other girl that's supposed to do kind of exclusive damage and she is an epic. That would be crazy if she did. A good opportunity to test performance. She's not melee, right? Doesn't look like it. Garments? Hairstyles? Delicacy? Well, I don't know. Looking at her fists, I don't, maybe she throws something. But now we've got to equip her with our old Total Nan gear. But even then, she's not going to have a lot of crit rate because even Total Nan doesn't use that much crit rate. We can't equip her with the same gear we had on our exclusive because the exclusive was taking advantage of critical damage. Let me see how she fights. Okay. Let's use... Let's use this artifact on her and then give her, is it this one? Yeah, we're going to have to give her, well, no, we can pick up some crit rate here. Let's see. What did we have? Critical damage with crit rate. nine i wonder if we can do better no we don't have any more pieces we can't do better okay attack and crit rate please she's only at 82 percent. so that's perfect for total nan to be at 82 percent. no problem there but for this girl that doesn't work out too well let's see if we can Is it doing crit rate? Oh, I already leveled up all the crit rate ones. Well, almost. Fourteen. That's pretty nice. Is it showing the descending order? Sixteen percent. Fourteen percent. That increases our crit rate by six. Okay, I'll take it. What about here? 15, 14. So this is 14 with an increased attack. Crit rate goes down by 1%. Let's replace that. Gloves, we got crit rate. Is that right? Crit rate of 8. We don't have crit rate of 17%. That would take care of all our issues if that was real. Critical damage, crit rate. Eight. Okay, chest piece. 
It's gonna be hard to farm. I I think it's gonna be really hard to hard to farm a three piece set like this this good and then to get the mythic. It's gonna be much harder. We're gonna have to do so much more farming. Okay, attack percentage with crit rate. What do we got? That's it. Okay, we're just gonna we're just gonna let her fly with eighty seven percent chance to crit. This is what we gotta do. Aura epic. Now let's do these times. Hey, what's going on, man? How's the season start so far? It's pretty good, man. I I feel like I've been using these aura guys just to play something new on the season day two. And I did 5.3 million, which I guess is pretty decent compared. Maybe I'm 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 in top like 30 for overall damage so far, but we still got a lot of time until the daily reset. But they've been working out well, well in goblins. Well, I mean, I think anything's gonna work out in goblins right now. They've been working out okay in the vortex boss. But if you look at the vortex boss, all you see are dauntless teams and ice blast teams. So those would work well too. I haven't seen any. Azuls. We'll go back and check it before I log off. We'll go look at Azuls and we'll look at um, we'll see if we can find any Azul in there for the shadow teams. I want to see some shadow teams in there. But of course, everything's going to change. This is day two. Nobody's got real gear. They're probably not even trying to play those heroes yet. Once we have gear, the whole you know, all the teams are going to change. We're definitely going to see some some varying teams later on. What's her cooldown? Does she have a fast one? Oh, she's 20. All right, let's see what this little girl can do. If she even gets up to 40, 50 million, even 45 million, that'd be pretty impressive. We were playing an exclusive that can crit all the time. All we needed was critical damage on her. And we used a legendary artifact, yes, but we didn't use her exclusive legendary artifact. We just used a generic one. So if this epic can really do that, that would be pretty nutty. She might be like a total nan then. If she's giving herself 15% additional attack, no, 50% additional attack permanently, it might be boosting her enough to where she's like a total nan kind of epic, right? I mean, right now she's doing, yeah, she's doing pretty good. Although my other girl over here, the support one, she's not a pure damage dealer. She's more of a support, so. I wonder if there's a different one we could play besides this fairy down here. It could get us some good damage going on. I remember last season I couldn't max damage on day one vortex. You couldn't max damage. Yeah, I remember that too. I actually do remember that. I had to wait until we had some gear. I think it's because this season they've allowed us to go steal some and buy some epic gear and rare gear. The reason was is because day one and day two of season two all we had was common gear and maybe like one piece or two pieces of rare gear so we went back around to the to the frozen lake area and then we got a couple more pieces of rare gear that's probably why but yeah i don't remember i don't remember having level 70s on day two with all my artifacts at plus eight because i don't even think we could i think day two we couldn't even do rank three i think we were blocked I had to do it in rank three, weren't we? It was slower. It was definitely slower. The best Frost DPS than Vetimir. Is he better than Vetimir? I don't know. I haven't played him very much. He's the one that gives all Frost people additional attack too, right? I've heard not good things about him because the way he jumps around too isn't really good, especially for goblins. 
And there are other heroes that can do what he does. As far as damage goes. You see only Ice Blast and Dauntless teams? Yeah. Ogok and Zephy. And then just Ogok on some of them. Yeah, that's all I saw too. Which was funny. I think it's kind of funny. We have all these new heroes and then everybody's just busting out all their Dauntless teams. All I see is Nesjinka along with Avelius. And then I see Ogok and Zephy teams. Or just Ogok in there. And then I see a lot of Ice Blast teams with Beldel that are killing it. I see other ice variations of Ice Blast teams in there. I see the, there's wild teams in there with Flora. Because she's an exclusive doing crazy damage. So I do see a lot of Flora teams up there in the top. And that's really it. That's all I saw. Then I saw one Corrosion team at 5 point something million. 5.3, 5.5, somewhere around there. Yeah, Oster is great, man. I love Oster. Yeah, Vedemir for sure only shines if there's multi-targets. They're close together. Excuse me. They're close together and there's Frost applied. With somebody like Rava, especially if she can keep applying Frost to take advantage of that little orb hitting everyone. Yeah, Vedemir's not... He's fun. I love Vedemir. Vedemir's a lot of fun on the in-game Mechatorque boss. He's great fun on the Phoenix. He's a lot of fun in Vortex if you have it set up. Not Vortex. If you, Goblin if you have it set up right. But... Overall, you don't really need it. <laughs> Depends on your roster, right? I don't know what season you're on, what day you're on, what you're playing. He can be fun, especially with Rav. With the Resurgent Dragon? Yeah, yeah. The Dragon or, or Mecha Turk, Torque, either one. The Dragon has three targets as well, right, that it's going to bounce from. Oh, you're on season three doing goblins at the moment. I'm sure you've got something. I mean, you could use Vedemir because you can always reset the hero for six days. So you can use whatever you want to use. Level up whatever you think it will work. If you don't like it, reset them back down to zero and level up somebody else. Once they start really checking them out, I think Azul is awesome. Yeah. 50% more damage than other duos I'm testing right now. Great. Did I test the epic corrosion heroes? I haven't. I haven't tested any corrosion because Rook is so overpowered that I heard it doesn't even, like, it's not worth using other corrosions. But we're doing a baseline right now. This is the whole reason why I'm logging on during the night, and I hope they update the, update the test server on Monday in two days from now. Unfortunately, we cannot test corrosion if they've changed them on the live server. We will tomorrow. Tomorrow night, we'll do this, okay? Tomorrow night, we'll log in and we'll do what we did with Aura. We went through all the Aura heroes and then I brought my tablet and we looked at the live server to see if there were any changes. We know there's changes on Rook. We already tested that. They're not updated on this test server that we're on right now. So we can't try Rook. We can't test out Rook. We even can't test out the Shadow guys because there's too many changes done to the Shadow to test them out. So it's not worth testing them out because as Polta... She was changed as far as how much shadow energy she or attack she gives people. She wasn't changed that much. The epic was changed, although Azul was not changed. And I don't think Daphne was changed either. So we could still do some shadow testing. We could definitely do it. We could do it with Azul and Daphne and then whatever else we want to put in there. We could try it out to get some good numbers. Corrosion, if the only thing they changed in Corrosion was Rook, then we could definitely, change, we could definitely test out all the other heroes to see if Corrosion's viable with just Epics and Rares. And I'd like to do that, yeah. Corrosion looks wild with billions of damage. Corrosion looks wild with all that damage with just Rook though, right? If you're just playing other people, does it still look wild? I don't know, I haven't done it yet. I did Shadow a little bit, did a video on Shadow because I thought they were really cool. They made changes to Shadow, so we need to go back and redo that. And then now I'm just testing out Aura to see how they are. Because I've been using Aura on my main account. And then once we get done with these Aura, we'll go over there and check Corrosion tomorrow. Everything but Rook. Yeah, we'll, we'll try that out. But I haven't seen Corrosion on my main server yet. But that's going to change, you know? Epic Corrosion does a lot of damage compared to what? I mean, what, what are you comparing a lot of damage to? It's got to be comparable to something. A lot of damage more than Ice Blast? More than Bledin and Girthin together? Or Shinna and Girthin? I don't know. I, I don't think so. From what I've heard from people that have actually tested it, I don't think so. 
but I like to do stuff myself, right? I like to make sure I test it myself, so we will definitely do it. We're still alive at 80 stacks. We're at 30 million. This little epic's putting in some work. She's at 62% damage. We didn't look at how much she uses. You know what we should have looked at because we're using the wings? Same situation that we had with the exclusive, right? The exclusive does a lot of damage with the wings when she does her ultimate ability because she's using 20 of the aura to make it enhanced. So the more aura they're using to enhance their skill, the better these wings will be. But it's capped at 30%. So if this little lady right here is using 15 to 20 aura on her ultimate and her battle skill, the wings would be good. If she's using a small amount of aura on both of those, these wings aren't doing anything for her. And I forgot to check. Let me log into my main account tablet and see what her what her amounts are. Or you guys might be logged in right now looking at your heroes. I just need to know how much she consumes when she's in blaze state for her ultimate and her battle skill. Oh, she just died? Oh, man. We only reached 34 million? <laughs> well, that's nowhere near the 53 million we got with our exclusive. But we could have gotten unlucky, right? Since our fairy back there is still alive, we probably got pretty unlucky. 120 stacks, she died. We'd have to run this again. Man, that's a long run, though. And it's already 10.47 p.m. for me over here. Okay, we need to test this again. Even if we got to 40 million with those four left, it's it's still not enough. 40, let's put 40. Test again. Because we got 56 million with her in there. I mean, that's still, I don't know why I'm not saying that's not enough. It's good. It's good when we're comparing an exclusive to an epic. I mean, that's extremely good. Okay, she does consume 20 aura energy and ignores defense. So she's getting a big boost from the wings on that. And then here she only consumes five. It's just like the other one. Just like the exclusive girl. Even though I can't say, what's her name? What's this girl's name? Theo Hoon? Theo Hoon? Hien? Theo, Theo Hien? Is that how you say that? And then I have no idea how to say this name. This, um, this one. No, not that one. This one. Amon Lydia? Ladia? Isn't that Ladia right there? Amon Ladia? Something like that. Let me know if that's close. Is, is Amon Ladia even close <laughs> to that? All right, guys, I'm going to head out. I need to get some sleep. It's 10.49 p.m. I've got some things to finish up. I actually got some videos I probably should do. I don't know if I'm going to do them. Tomorrow is Sunday, so my family is home. They're probably out there. I don't know if my wife is still watching TV or she went to bed already. Depends on how tired she was. But I got to go to bed so that I can wake up at 9 a.m. my time. So not that many hours away. What, 10 hours away? 10 hours away, we'll be back at this doing day three on my main account. But I feel like we got some pretty good baseline testing. We've got five days left on the boss. So this critical damage along like this, this advantage for the boss will be here for us to do continued testing on, which is good. So we'll do some more aura testing tomorrow. And then we'll start with the corrosion testing of the lower level corrosion stuff. Any, anything about Rook? Because <laughs> we already know Rook's busted. He's just too good. So anything about Rook, we'll test all those out and see what kind of damage we can do and see how that compares to the damage we're doing with these guys, right? We've got Total Dan Eric here at 43 million. We've got these two, which we'll test again and see if we can get somewhere around 43 million. We've got the exclusive at, exclusive at 56 million. And then we'll do Corrosion. Uh, 32 million. But I did make it to 270 stacks with this one. But it was only 32 million. That's not good. All right, we'll keep it there. We'll keep it there for now. Goblin team, don't need it anymore. And shadows. We tested this out and we'll test out some other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Can you make the team with who? And one epic? Which one? For what? Rook? 
we'll do that with Azul tomorrow for sure. If we have time, we'll, we'll try out Azul along with Daphne. And that's the Shadow Epic. The Aura one? Can you try it with the... Can I try it with this one? And this one? Yeah, we can do that tomorrow. The exclusive along with the Epic. These two together. And see how they do. Yeah, we can do that too. Might work out well. It's totally different gear. As well. I mean, they're using like very different gear. So that'll make it easier for us. We just slap on a few more pieces and run it through. We'll test that out. All right, is there anybody doing Dragonair Silent Gods right now that you guys know? YDCB is doing Dragonair Silent Gods. Okay, he must have a promotion to do it. He's checking out Season 3. I used to watch him with Summoner's War and Epic 7 back in the day. I guess that's it. Yeah, I don't know anybody else. Okay, guys, I'm going to head out. I will see you in 11 hours from now. Yeah, 11 hours. I'll be on. And then I'll be on tomorrow night, same time that I'm on right now. And we'll test some stuff out. Thanks so much for joining me tonight, guys. Appreciate it. If you haven't played Dragonair, download it from the link down below or come and join us. You can, you can do it on Steam or your mobile device. And then come over to my Discord. Discord's down below as well as my YouTube. And over on Discord, you'll always have all the codes right away whenever they're posted. And you can have tons of people to talk with. We've got lots of different chats over here. Yeah, Grave. Everyone have a great night. Thanks so much for joining me. I will see you all soon.